Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Sailing, Plant a Golden Tree at the Beginning. Chapter 1. West Blue, O'Hara. For the entire ocean, this is just an inconspicuous island, but it is famous for gathering the world's best archaeologists, first-class archaeological teams, and the world's largest library, Omniscience Tree. In that huge, pod-like tree, precious texts from all over the world are stored, but because of the research on historical texts, those scholars who love history are called demons, and this island full of knowledge. It was also turned into ruins under the artillery fire of Buster Call. The omniscience tree in the center of the island was destroyed, leaving behind a huge lake and a huge amount of documents covering the bottom of the lake. I. Still alive. The faint sound of mosquitoes and flies, in this ruin, the black-haired boy trembled, as if he had used up all his strength to turn over and let himself breathe. Kroba Raymond, during the crossing, his body became smaller due to the turbulence of time and space, and fell on O'Hara Island. In a coma, he was picked up by the old director of O'Hara Library and adopted as his grandson. He is also the only archaeologist who survived except Robin who escaped from the island with the help of Saul. He thought about escaping from O'Hara before Buster Call came, but the problem was his physical condition. It was extremely difficult to build a ship, not to mention that every time he built a part, he would be caught by the old director, Dr. Kroba. After trying for countless times without success, Raymond could only change his mind and choose to study hard in O'Hara and build a good relationship with Little Robin. When Saul came to O'Hara, he followed Little Robin to escape from Buster Call, but unfortunately, things did not go as he wished. After knowing the relationship between him and Dr. Kroba, the group of idiots CP9 stared at him more closely than his own wife, and did not give him a chance to sneak away. And then, that's it. At this moment, Raymond was in a very bad state, with many marks left by the gunfire on his body. But being able to survive the bombardment of Buster Call is already a blessing in disguise, right? No. Not only did he survive, but his body remained intact, which was simply a miracle. After an unknown amount of time, he sat up and looked at the broken walls and the corpses that could not be distinguished at all. Even most of them, not even corpses were left. At this time, a group of people in black suits were approaching him. It was no wonder that these guys were members of CP9, an agent organization affiliated with the world government. If they saw him, there would be no other possibility except being killed. Huh. What is this? It was impossible to escape. Just when Raymond was about to stand up and fight, he suddenly felt a round object in his hand. Fruit. Or seed. When he was confused about this, a bright golden light burst out from the seed, making him feel warm all over. The achievement, surviving a disaster, has been achieved, and the law system has been activated. The main law is confirmed to be, golden law. Ding. Reincarnating the, people, of the law for the host. Hem. The golden law. Could it be the golden law that I know? That means the seed that appeared in my hand just now was the seed of the golden tree brought by this system. With this thought, Raymond closed his eyes and carefully felt his own system. The so-called law system is a system that combines countless laws that can be used to rule the world, and the golden law, which is defined as the main law, comes from the Elden Law Ring world. In addition to strengthening oneself as a host, the system can also summon the people of the Law Ring world, or reincarnate them into this world. Therefore, those who are reincarnated will automatically become people who are absolutely loyal to themselves and the golden law, and regard themselves as gods. However, neither strengthening nor reincarnation can be used casually, and a certain amount of law points are required. The ways to obtain law points include killing enemies, spreading faith, etc. As for the reincarnation currently in progress, it is naturally a novice benefit provided by the system. Ding. This reincarnation has been successful. Evil Omen King, Blessing King, Menjit. As the system's voice fell, a golden ball of light fell in front of Raymond, and then the light dissipated, and a tall figure wearing a rag cloak emerged from it. With white hair, horns on his body symbolizing the furnace of life, and a scepter in his hand, even if he looks ugly, he still exudes the majesty and momentum that belongs only to the king. After the light completely faded, Manjit didn't care about the CP9 agents approaching. He turned around and knelt respectfully towards Raymond, Sinner Manjit, I pay my respects to my god. 
He didn't call himself the last king like he did in the original game when facing the fated ones, but called himself a sinner. Because he was born with an evil omen without blessing, facing the god king who ruled the golden law, no matter how strong and tough his character was, he couldn't hide the inferiority and pain. Ah, uh, cough cough. Raymond wanted to put his hand on the other's shoulder, but suddenly found that Manjit was so tall that he couldn't touch his shoulder even if he knelt in front of him. After silently withdrawing his hand, he coughed twice as if to ease the embarrassment, then took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, You are evil on the outside, but blessed on the inside. You have never been a sinner, but the king of evil in the eyes of the enemy, and the king of blessing under my golden light. Although the, people, reincarnated by the system are absolutely loyal to him, Raymond still feels that it is necessary to appease people's hearts. What's more, he also respects the last king who hides a great soul under this ugly shell. Although I didn't know how many generations of his ancestors I had cursed when I controlled the fated one to beat him in my previous life. Oh, there are still too lucky. I said that the scale of Buster Call should be made bigger. If it weren't for the higher-ups asking us to come and check, you would have been lucky enough to survive. Soon, the CP9 agent who was approaching also saw Raymond and Manjit clearly, and said with a smile on his face, but it's good, getting rid of you two is a credit anyway. The three CP9 agents rushed forward and all attacked Manjit first. After all, a teenager like Raymond was not a threat at all in their eyes. It's pointless to insult me, and insult my god, you should be killed. In anger, Manjit turned around, and the hand holding the scepter suddenly exerted force, and its shell shattered in an instant, and then a sword with abnormal color change and twisting appeared. In the blink of an eye, he rushed out quickly, without giving the agents any time to react, and raised his hand and killed the idiot in the front first with a sword. However, although this moment shocked the remaining two people, it also gave them a chance to respond. Iron Body. Seeing the way the second remaining CP9 faced Mongo's attack, Raymond Kakuzu couldn't help twitching twice. Use Iron Body at this time. Are you afraid that you are not dying fast enough? Sure enough, the evil king didn't care whether you had iron body or not. After approaching, he just chopped the guy who insulted the god he served in half like cutting tofu. Witnessing the fate of his two colleagues, the last CP9 lost all his fighting spirit. I thought he had encountered a merit that was easy to get, but who knew it was a deadly evil spirit. Shave. In addition to running away, he had no other thoughts at the moment. After pulling away, the agent couldn't help laughing when he saw Mongit standing there without moving, ha ha ha. Thirty years of hard training finally came in handy today. Want to kill me, iron legs floating on water. That's not that easy. While laughing wildly, he burst out his potential and further increased the speed of shaving. But at this moment, Mongit slowly raised his other hand without a weapon, and the golden light condensed on it, turning into a dagger that broke through the air. Very good, you are worthy of being the blessed king under the gold. Raymond couldn't help but praise him because his injuries had been completely recovered with the help of the system. In less than half a minute, he easily killed three CP9 agents, and anyone could see that Mungert didn't do much. Raymond felt that as the last king who protected the Golden Law and the royal city of Rodel, Mungert's strength in this world should at least be at the admiral level. Even if he was stronger than the Admiral Four Emperors, it wouldn't be strange. But crushing three ants is not worthy of my praise. Mungert's momentum was completely restrained, and when facing Raymond, he only regarded himself as a devout follower. After nodding slightly, Raymond said nothing more. He started to check the current panel with a thought. Host. Kroba Raymond. Identity. Ohara Scholar. Golden God King. Law. Golden Law 10%. Abilities, Exalt Golden Law, Golden Aura, Golden Blessing, Armament Hockey, Observation Hockey, Conqueror's Hockey. Weapon, None, Guardian, Beast of Elden, Unlocked. Subjects, Mongo, Legion, None, Law Value, 750. Item, Golden Tree Seed. Looking at the current panel, Raymond was a little surprised. He had just understood the Golden Law given to him by the system. However, he did not expect that because he mastered the Golden Law, he strengthened himself and directly mastered the Conqueror's Hockey belonging to the Pirate World. He didn't feel anything about his Armament Hockey and Observation Hockey, but Conqueror's. Well, it makes sense when you think about it. 
As the god king who controls the golden law, it is natural for him to awaken conqueror's hockey. And the 750 law value must have been obtained by Manjit killing three CP9 agents just now. On average, each one is worth 250. So, those three are not CP9, but three 250. What a weakling. At the same time, Raymond also knew that the more people he reincarnated, the higher his control over the Golden Law would be, and he could even surpass the 100% limit and let the Golden Law reach an unprecedented level. As for the Golden Tree Seed in his hand, looking at the remains of the all-knowing tree destroyed by the Buster Call gunfire, Raymond sighed and put down the Golden Tree Seed. The moment it touched the ground, brilliant golden light enveloped all directions, and the golden tree began to grow at a very fast speed. In just about a minute, the huge and sacred golden tree appeared before their eyes. And around Raymond and Mungert, thirteen thrones made of gold appeared. Five thrones stood on each side, and the remaining three thrones were very special and were placed horizontally at the entrance inside the golden tree. The golden temple has been built. The thirteen thrones have been built. When the system prompt sounded, information about the temple and throne also emerged in Raymond's mind. The so-called Golden Temple is inside the Golden Tree. As the God King who controls the Golden Law, it is his residence. As for the Thirteen Thrones, they are prepared for the Thirteen, special people, who were reincarnated. If you are one of them, then within the coverage of the Golden Law, you can show strength beyond yourself. The three thrones at the entrance of the Golden Tree belong to the Apostles of God, and the rest can be called the Thrones of the Ten Kings. However, the scope of the Golden Law now only covers Ohara and the nearby sea area. But then again, none of those who are qualified to be recognized as the Thirteen Thrones by the system are weak. My God! Mongut's eyes were attracted to one of the thrones at this moment, and he wanted to say something, but he swallowed it back when he got to his lips. He felt that one of the thrones belonged to him, but he didn't dare to say it. Mongut, who was born with bad omens, thought that if he was in one of them, it might be a defilement of the throne. At this time, Raymond walked to the middle of the three thrones of the Apostles of God and sat down. Why doesn't the Blessed King sit? The Blessed King. The three words came into his ears and touched Mongut's soul. He raised his face, which had become distorted and ugly because of the furnace of life, and his eyes were faintly shining with crystal. Then he trembled, walked step by step to the throne that originally belonged to him, looked at Raymond with an inquiring look, and sat down slowly after the latter nodded, but even so, his body did not stop shaking. As a bad omen, a person who was not blessed by gold, he finally got the recognition of gold at this moment. Others might find it difficult to understand his mood at this moment. But at this time, Raymond's eyes became a little strange. He was the god king who was in charge of the golden law, and Mongot was one of the ten kings under him, so what? It was empty, there were only two people under the huge golden tree, it felt strange no matter how you looked at it. Why not use the 750 law points just obtained to reincarnate the people? Consume all the law points and reincarnate. Do it as soon as you say it, who knows if you can reincarnate some powerful guys. For example, the Valkyrie Marenia, the star-breaking General Latin, etc., then you will be unhappy, right? But soon Raymond knew that he was overthinking. After all, it would be a miracle if the law value provided by the three idiots could regenerate those who were very likely to be on the same throne as Manjit. Ding. This rebirth has been successful. Exile Soldiers Asterisk 7. There was no golden light shining when Manjit appeared, and there was not even a special effect. Seven soldiers with crimson hoods covering their heads and wearing armor covered with scars appeared in front of him. Although he had expected that no powerful existence would be reborn, these seven. Aren't they just monsters? Greetings to my god. Greetings to the blessed king. After appearing, the exile soldiers knelt down immediately, and their loyalty was still full. Looking at the panel again, Raymond found that these seven exile soldiers did not appear in the column of the people, but there was an exile legion in the legion. Good guy, seven people dare to call it a legion. If there were 800 people, wouldn't they dare to challenge an army of 100,000? And seven reincarnations were made with 750 law points. Wait a minute, this exiled soldier can't be reincarnated once with 100 law points, right? The dog system swallowed up 50 of its own law points. What kind of Antarctic goose behavior is this? 
After looking at the exiled soldier in front of him for a while, Raymond suddenly had an idea in his mind. You, come here. Finding that the god he believed in was looking at him, one of the exiled soldiers immediately took two steps forward and knelt again. Although he was closer, he still kept a long distance. After all, he was just a soldier, not one of the ten kings, let alone an apostle of God. If he got closer, it would be considered an usurpation. Please let me command you, God. The exiled soldier spoke respectfully. Looking at his appearance at the moment, even if Raymond asked him to commit suicide on the spot, he would not hesitate at all. At this moment, Raymond's eyes radiated golden light, and the aura of the whole person completely disappeared, replaced by a kind of unattainable divinity. The lush leaves of the golden tree shook gently, and several golden lights like leaves were sprinkled, slowly falling on the exiled soldier. Then, the golden light flowed on the soldier, and the originally damaged armor quickly turned into brand new silver armor, with tree-shaped patterns on it. Then, the exiled soldier's body became much taller, and the aura he exuded was several times stronger than before. Huh. After exhaling a breath of foul air and his eyes returning to normal, Raymond felt that his strength had been drained, and even standing up was difficult. However, his goal had been achieved, and he was quite satisfied. Just now, he tried his ability on this exiled soldier, the Golden Blessing. If the exiled soldier who had just been reincarnated only had the strength of an elite marine soldier, then this guy who was blessed at this moment was at least at the level of a non-commissioned officer or even a colonel. And Raymond also felt that this was not the limit of the Golden Blessing, but his current mastery of the Golden Law limited its use. Of course, this blessing obviously cannot be used at will. Not only is it a huge consumption for oneself, it also seems to consume the power of the golden tree. I have to find an opportunity to try whether I can bless the natives. If I can, it is a means of spreading faith. I have such an idea, but I can't try it for the time being. After all, there is no native of the pirate world on Ohara now. Mongat, they will be under your command from now on. After a pause, Raymond continued to order, let them clean up the surroundings, and then build a ship to collect supplies from the surrounding islands, and also absorb some people. I will obey God's will. By the way, before that, go get some fish around. After relaxing, Raymond immediately felt hungry. What about the Golden God King? The God King doesn't need to eat. As for collecting law points, Raymond is not in a hurry at all. Because he knows very well that in a few days, those guys will come to the door by themselves. The three CP9 agents have no news in Ohara, and the world government will not sit idly by. Not long after, Raymond took the grilled fish, offered, by Mongat and walked into the interior of the Golden Tree, which is his own temple. While soothing his stomach, he also looked at the scene inside. Apart from a golden palace, everything else is the same as the final scene of the circle, but without the Beast of Elden. Of course, Radagon definitely doesn't exist. But there is a huge golden egg. It is basically certain that this golden egg is the Elden Beast that has not yet hatched. It is just unclear whether I need to reincarnate the Elden Beast myself, or master enough golden laws before I can hatch it. This feeling. After eating the last bite of grilled fish, Raymond raised his hand, and a terrifying divine power emerged in his palm. I didn't expect that the inside of the golden tree would have such a high bonus for me. Being inside the golden tree, my strength has increased by an unknown amount. With my control of 10% of the golden law, I guess I am about the same as the vice admiral of the headquarters in the outside world. But at this moment, I actually have a feeling that I can kill the admiral, so I don't have to worry about the marine or the world government executing a decapitation operation on me. Then, it depends on how many gifts the world government will give me next. We only killed three ordinary CP9s, so there shouldn't be any guys that Mongo can't deal with. You can't just use Uranus to attack me for three idiots, right? Waste. Waste. They are all waste. Spandine cursed loudly, and took a cup and smashed it on the CP9 agent who had just delivered intelligence to him. Three people went to clean up the battlefield, but they were killed. They didn't even pass on any intelligence. Which idiot was blind enough to recruit them? Who else could it be? Aren't they all arranged by you? The agent who was hit lowered his head, complaining wildly in his heart, but in fact he didn't dare to talk at all. 
all of them in CP9 knew exactly what kind of person their superior was. Not only was he incompetent, but he was also narrow-minded and liked to pass on the blame. During his years in office, I don't know how many colleagues lost their lives because of taking the blame. But trash is trash, and Spandine is not a complete idiot to be able to sit in this position. After venting, he immediately started thinking, and then said in a deep voice, even if O'Hara's scholars survive the buster call by chance, they definitely don't have the strength to kill those three rubbish. There must be rats from other forces intervening. And the one who can make those three rubbish unable to even pass on information must be a big rat. HMPH. No matter where it comes from, it must be dealt with. Hearing this, the agent finally raised his head and said with a little flattery, Sir, I will gather people immediately. Gathering shit. With you, you may just be sending your heads. Spandine didn't give his men face at all. As the leader of CP9, he knew what kind of people his men were. I'll call Sengoku and let Marine take action to deal with those rats. If I remember correctly, there should be a vice admiral who executed the buster call who hasn't left West Blue yet. He made such a decision not because he felt sorry for his men's lives, but if CP9 suffered too much loss because of this incident. Not only will it affect the execution of other tasks, he will also be blamed by the higher-ups, so it is better to just throw this trouble to Marine. The strength of the headquarters vice admiral is still trustworthy. Even if Marine suffers in this matter, it can't be blamed on him, right? Well, let's do it this way. I will tell Sengoku that it might be the surviving scholar of Ohara, which is equivalent to their mistake in executing Buster Call. Vice Admiral, didn't you say you were leaving West Blue and returning to the headquarters today? Why are you going back to Ohara? That island is undoubtedly a ruin under the artillery fire of Buster Call. Listening to his adjutant's question, Huo Shaoshan kept a smile on his face. This is the order of Sengoku Admiral. There is no need to have any doubts. Just clean up Ohara again. Speed up and complete the mission before dark. Yes. As a qualified marine commander, obeying orders is the most basic. Just like when he borrowed Sengoku's phone, he chose to execute it without asking too many questions. It's just that for that island. Ohara. I feel a little sympathy in my heart. West Blue, Ohara. Mongert and his exile soldiers are very efficient. In just a few days, Ohara, which was destroyed by artillery fire, has been completely renewed. The earth has also regained its vitality under the power of the golden tree. It is completely impossible to tell that this place has just suffered the blow of Buster Call not long ago. My god, the exile knight has led two people out to sea to purchase supplies from nearby islands and seas. Menjit knelt on one knee in front of Raymond and reported the actions during this period in detail. The exile knight he mentioned was actually the soldier who received the blessing of gold. As for, purchase, it should be plunder. After all, they don't have Bailey on them, and it is impossible to obtain supplies by normal means. Of course, they will not attack the common people. The targets they regard as plunder are pirates and those landlords who are arrogant and domineering. Well, just do it according to your ideas, I. Before he finished speaking, Raymond frowned, but the corners of his mouth rose slightly, is it finally here? Ha ha, I can't wait. His perception is everywhere under the cover of the golden tree. Let alone a marine warship, as long as he wants, he can know the location of even an ant clearly. My god, what do you mean? Menjit turned his head and looked at the coast, and murderous intent unconsciously appeared in his eyes. Don't kneel here, go and greet our guests. Raymond sat on the throne in the middle, supporting his face with one hand, remember to leave a person who knows hockey alive, and let him hand over the training methods of armament hockey and observation hockey, which will help improve your strength. As the golden god king, he naturally doesn't need it himself. As long as he improves his mastery of the golden law, his skills will naturally become stronger. But Manjit and other reincarnated people are different. They need to practice the abilities born in the pirate world by themselves. Devil fruit and other things will be discussed later. What is most needed now is the training method of hockey. Who knows if the ability of the golden law can deal with those guys in Logia. I will obey the will of God. Manjit stood up and slowly left the range of the thirteen thrones. This was a courtesy to the god he served. Then he burst out with that terrifying speed and rushed towards the direction of Marine's landing. 
O'Hara Coast. The Vice Admiral class warship slowly approached the shore, and hundreds of Marine soldiers landed under the leadership of Huo Shaoshan. Is that the Tree of All Knowing? Impossible, the Tree of All Knowing has been destroyed by Buster Call, not to mention that it is definitely not this golden and dazzling. When he approached O'Hara, he had already seen the giant tree covered with golden light, and he felt uneasy unconsciously. Now that he has landed, this uneasiness is becoming more and more intense. You know, as the Vice Admiral of Naval Headquarters, Huo Shaoshan is also first class in strength on the sea, and there are not many strong people who can make him feel uneasy. Trample. 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 As dull footsteps came, Huo Shaoshan ordered alert without hesitation, and then urged observation hockey to sense the surroundings and looked in the direction of the breath. When he saw the source of the footsteps, his face sank. Who are you? Menjit looked indifferent, and a low voice came from his mouth. One of the thirteen thrones of the Ohara Golden Kingdom, the evil omen King Menjit. You, are you going to surrender or perish? Inwardly, he is the king of blessing, and to the outside. It is obvious that he prefers the title of the evil omen king, not because he likes the evil omen, but because he wants to bring the evil omen to the enemy so as not to fail the trust of God. Huh. Huo Shaoshan was stunned for a moment. Isn't Ohara a gathering place for scholars? What is this golden kingdom? And the guy in front of him who calls himself the king of evil omens doesn't look like a normal human being at all. I'm sorry, I have no intention of surrendering, but you guys. After a pause, Huoshan Shao couldn't help but sigh softly, if he is really Ohara's man, then he should be alive after escaping Buster Call by chance. Why bother? Forget it, there is no point in talking more. Since you have chosen a dead end, you should accept it with pleasure, right? As he spoke, the long sword on his waist was slowly pulled out. Although he felt the extraordinary aura emanating from Manjit, he didn't think the other party had any chance of winning. Not only was he confident in his own strength, but also the gap in the strength of the two sides was too big. There were only four soldiers behind the other side, and although some of the elite marines of Buster Call on his side followed other ships back to the headquarters. But at this moment, there are still hundreds of marines, it's impossible for the other side to have an advantage, right? Bang! The scepter shattered, and the sword of evil omen appeared again in this world, with a powerful momentum rushing forward like a wave. At the same time, Mungert clenched his right hand suddenly, and the terrifying golden power condensed into a spear on it. Obey. My gods will, kill. He shouted loudly, and then threw the golden spear with all his strength. The terrifying power instantly set off a gust of wind, and the four exiled soldiers behind him also charged with the spear. There were only a few people, but at this moment they burst out with the power of a hundred people. After all, they were soldiers who were exiled but they were also warriors who had protected Stonewell City for countless years. Shave. Huo Shaoshan cursed in a low voice, and then rushed out to face the golden spear, holding the long knife with both hands, and slashed it fiercely in front. The moment he saw the spear flying towards him, he knew that he had to block this attack, otherwise the elite marines behind him would suffer heavy casualties. Boom. The sound of thunder shook the world, and violent air waves spread in all directions. At the same time, Huo Shaoshan's face changed rapidly. He never thought that his full-strength attack could not break it. Even, the huge force was constantly impacting his body. Where did this guy come from? Ohara definitely can't have such a strong man. If the other party is really Ohara's man, why didn't he stand up during the buster call? With his strength, even if he couldn't stop Ohara's destruction, he could definitely save some people and leave. After all, there is a Kuzan in their buster call. Huo Shaoshan cursed in his heart. He thought it was a simple cleaning task, but he didn't expect to encounter such a level of existence. Dare to be distracted in front of me. The cold voice sounded like a death knell to Huo Shaoshan. His heart trembled, and he subconsciously activated observation hockey to ultimate, and no longer cared about the golden spear that was almost completely cut. Moonwalk stepped out. His body turned in the air, and then he saw the sword of evil omen almost passing by his nose. If he reacted a little slower, even if he didn't die, his nose would be cut off by this sword. But if he avoided this attack, that would be his chance. Moonwalk turned around, and armament hockey gathered on the long sword. Just as he was about to swing the sword, the dazzling golden light had already covered his sight. 
A sneer appeared on Manjit's face, as if all this was within his expectations. Throwing the golden spear, cutting off the evil omen sword, and then at this moment, the golden hammer condensed in his right hand and smashed it down fiercely. From the beginning, the whole battle was under his control. And in the end, what he would gain was the life of Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, Huo Shaoshan. Huo Shaoshan knew that he was planning to attack back, so it was too late to retreat now. Bang! A deafening sound rose to the sky, and the huge force that was enough to shatter the mountains immediately poured down on Huo Shaoshan. Puff! Blood spurted out of his mouth, and the body that was originally majestic in the eyes of the marine soldiers fell to the ground at this moment. But he was the vice admiral of the naval headquarters after all, and as long as he had a breath left, he would. Bang! Just when he was about to get up, a foot stepped hard on his head, pressing his head firmly to the ground, unable to move. Mongit didn't even look at him, but just looked at the hundreds of marine soldiers, and then slowly raised his left hand. Above the sky, countless golden lightsabers gathered. Seeing this scene, Huo Shaoshan's heart trembled immediately, and he frantically urged his remaining strength and struggled to get up. No. Retreat. The whole army retreats. Vice Admiral. Vice Admiral. I'll come to save you. Don't worry about me, retreat, retreat. Huo Shaoshan screamed at the top of his lungs, his eyes wide open and bloodshot, his ten fingers sank into the mud, bleeding. Since you are going to the battle, you should be prepared to die here, why wail at this moment and show such an ugly appearance? It seems that I overestimated you before. As soon as the voice fell, the raised left hand also fell. No. The lightsaber made of gold fell to the ground like a torrential rain at this moment. Those so-called marine elites couldn't even resist the power of the Golden Law. As for the few exiled soldiers who charged into battle, they didn't worry whether the attack would fall on them. As a citizen of gold, even death is nothing more than returning to the Golden Tree. As long as you serve the God King faithfully, you can be reborn. As for the Burning Mountain, apart from wailing, you can only watch this. Massacre. Ohara, inside the Golden Tree. Kill the marine elite soldier and get 100 law points. Kill the marine sergeant and get 300 law points. Kill the marine major and get 500 law points. I'm rich, I'm rich, hee <laughs> hee. Looking at the crazy soaring law points, Raymond only felt that it was more difficult to suppress the corners of his mouth than to suppress AK. How long has it been? The law points have exceeded 10,000. Killing an arson gold belt, the ancients are not deceiving me. Tens of thousands of law points, this will definitely give birth to powerful people, right? Just when Raymond was excited about this, another system prompt sounded. Kill Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Huo Shaoshan and get 50,000 law points. Question mark question mark question mark. Oh my god, Huo Shaoshan is so valuable. This guy is worth the law points provided by hundreds of marine soldiers. Should we say that he is worthy of being the Vice Admiral of the Headquarters? In this way, if you kill an admiral or four emperors, wouldn't the reward law be worth 100,000 or more? How can I say that I want to attack naval headquarters? Check the current law value. After the reward prompt sound ended, Raymond gave a conscientious order. Current law value. 91,200. Seeing this number, Raymond couldn't help but take a breath. He felt that it would be a lot. After all, in addition to Huo Shaoshan, Manjit also killed several marines at the level of school officers, plus hundreds of elite marines. But he didn't expect it to be so many. Huo Shaoshan, wouldn't he have opened some of the buster calls that were not withdrawn? I have to say that Huo Shaoshan is really a good person. So, how should I spend these more than 90,000 law points? Should I keep some just in case, or consume all the law points and reincarnate? After just a moment of hesitation, Raymond made a decision directly. Keep a hammer, Mr. Treeman said that you can only earn if you know how to spend. Consume 91,200 law points to reincarnate Raymond felt that his heart stopped beating, and he put his hands together and prayed to the golden tree. Wait a minute, something seems wrong. He is the god king of the golden law, so who is he praying to the golden tree? Why does it feel like worshipping Guan Eri in the peach garden? Ding. This reincarnation has been successful. Miguel's Blade, Goddess of Corruption, Malania. Knight of Honor Corruption 12. Activate the attached Law Scarlet Corruption. Ability. Law Purification. 
Golden Law Control Improvement. Consume 50,000 law points to start the main task. Kingdom of Gods. Reward Soul Return. A series of prompt sounds made Raymond almost jump up with joy, but as a god king, he still needs to maintain basic manners, after all, the reincarnated people will appear in front of him soon. As the golden tree dropped a fruit-like light ball, Malania soon appeared in front of him. A battle armor made of pure gold, the helmet seemed to have wings, and the bright red long hair fell behind her like a waterfall. The most notable thing is the hands and feet supplemented by golden prostheses, but even if the body is deformed and disabled, her beauty can be seen from her posture. But don't underestimate her because of this. Her strength is at least at the level of admiral in this world, not to mention the scarlet corruption hidden in her body. That is a terrifying force that can almost destroy a country or even the world. Behind her, twelve noble corrupt knights wearing winged helmets stood proudly. These noble corrupt knights are Marlinia's exclusive troops. Each of them can be called an elite, and their strength is far beyond that of the exiled soldiers. Even the exiled knight who received the golden blessing is no match for these warriors who followed Marlinia in the battles. After all, the gap in basic ability is too big, and Raymond's control of the golden law is not high. At this moment, Marlinia knelt on one knee, Marlinia pays homage to my god. From now on, you will be my god's sharp blade. Where my god's will is, I will kill all the enemies for my god. At the same time, the noble corrupt knights also knelt down and swore, I am willing to be my god's blade. Host. Kroba Raymond. Identity. Ohara Scholar. Golden God King. Law. Golden Law 20%. Subordinate Law. Scarlet Corruption 1%. Abilities. Exalt Golden Law. Golden Aura. Golden Blessing. Golden Purification, Soul Return, Armament Hockey, Observation Hockey, Conqueror's Hockey. Weapons. None. Guardian. Beast of Elden, Unlocked. Subjects. Blessing King Mongot, Valkyrie Marinia. Legion. Exile Soldiers 7, Honored Corruption Knights 12. Law Value. Zero. Items. None. Main Quest. Kingdom of the Gods, Golden Light Envelops the World. After checking the current panel. Raymond began to learn in detail about the two new skills and the main quest that suddenly appeared. Gold purification can purify the disasters caused by other laws to a certain extent, just like scarlet corruption. Soul return means collecting the souls of the dead creatures under the golden light into the golden tree, cleansing them and returning them to the world to become the people of the golden kingdom. However, the chance of cleansing being successful is only half. Just after getting this skill, the souls of Huo Shaoshan and a group of marines killed by Manjit are now collected in the Golden Tree. Unfortunately, the souls of the people of Ohara have long dissipated, and they did not die under the Golden Light. My god, the invading enemies have been completely annihilated. We seized a warship, a lot of supplies and weapons. And a marine colonel who knows the method of hockey cultivation. After Manjit came back, he walked forward slowly and saluted. As for the few miserable exile soldiers, they were now responsible for cleaning the battlefield. Well, you did a good job, you sit down first. It's all thanks to Kamui. It seems that because of this praise, Manjit's always calm face actually showed a smile, but when he smiled. Yes, it's uglier than crying. When he walked back to his throne and sat down, he glanced at Marinia, and his eyes were somewhat dissatisfied. It was obvious that he did not have a good relationship with this corrupt goddess. But now, since they were all serving God, they would not care. The next moment, Raymond moved his eyes to Marinia. This Valkyrie had abused him enough in his previous life. After a long silence, he slowly raised his hand, and a soft golden light immediately appeared on her. Thank you for my God's gift. After the light merged into her body, Marinia felt that her body was extremely relaxed, and endless pleasure surged in her heart. The restless scarlet corruption in the past was as quiet as a lake. Raymond nodded gently, Marinia, return to your seat. That's right, the moment Marinia appeared, Raymond already knew that this powerful Valkyrie, like Mungert, was among the Ten Kings. Side quest activated, 13 thrones, 2 thirteenths. Reward building, Golden King City. Host, please confirm the construction site of the Golden Royal City. Instantly, a shadow of a city appeared in front of Raymond's eyes, a city that was more gorgeous and magnificent than the Royal City of Rodel in the Ring of Law. 
and he knew very well that as long as he wanted, this royal city would stand on the earth in an instant. Ohara. No need to hesitate, the golden tree was planted here, so the royal city should certainly stand here. Just a thought, the whole land of Ohara shook wildly, and the magnificent royal city rose from the ground in an instant. The location of the thirteen thrones was changed to the highest palace in the entire royal city, and the entrance to the golden tree was also here. And those who witnessed the royal city rising from the ground, even Mungert and Marinia, had endless enthusiasm in their eyes. This is the god he serves. Raymond's eyes burst into golden light, and then the golden tree sprinkled thousands of golden leaves, turning into people one after another on the streets of this royal city. Just a quick look will reveal that these newborns bathed in golden light are the marines that Manjit had killed not long ago. The most conspicuous guy among them is naturally the former naval headquarters vice admiral, Huo Shaoshan. But unfortunately, these people who were washed and transformed by the golden tree do not have the strength and memory of their former lives. In addition to the faint golden light in their eyes, their physical fitness is also better than that of ordinary people. After doing this, Raymond breathed a sigh of relief. Manjit, you are responsible for arranging these newborn people and formulating the laws of the kingdom. Let the remaining exile soldiers buy some seeds and cattle and sheep and give them to the people below to let them farm and raise outside the city. At the same time, absorb some people from the surrounding islands. As long as they are willing to believe in the golden law, whether they are ordinary people, beggars, slaves, they can all become golden people. Yes, sir. Manjit said respectfully. As the king of blessing, it is not very easy for him to manage a country. After all, the current golden kingdom is only Ohara. It is better to say that it is managing a city than managing a country. Marienia, take your Zunfu knights and talk to the five major families of West Blue to make them submit to gold. Can you do it? Since gold is going to cover this world, let's start with West Blue. He has such an idea, not to mention that there is now an additional main task and rewards. The five major mafia families representing the dark world of West Blue are the first target selected by Raymond. Don't worry, my god, under the sharp blade of gold, those guys are just pigs and dogs to be slaughtered. Even though she didn't know what level the five major families of West Blue were, Marinia didn't think they had the possibility to compete with her. In fact, she felt that she didn't even need to bring even a Zunfu knight, and she could single-handedly sweep away those guys mentioned by the King of God. But she didn't go back to question Raymond's orders, she just had to obey. Well, after they surrender, one person can come to the royal city to worship, and I can bless him with gold. Let Marenia beat someone up, and then you have to give her some benefits, right? Just hearing this, Marenia felt a little jealous. She didn't think that ants were qualified to be blessed by the god king. The five major families of West Blue, right? I hope you have some backbone and don't surrender directly, otherwise I won't be able to kill you. In addition, someone should come to inquire about intelligence recently, just give them a little bit. After saying this, Raymond stood up and walked towards the inside of the golden tree. He also needs time to control the scarlet corruption that has just been activated. This kind of subsidiary law is difficult to improve by the system. When he was about to enter the inside of the golden tree, Raymond suddenly stopped and looked back at the land of Ohara. He had an indescribable feeling in his heart, did I forget something? Only a few days have passed, and Ohara has become completely different from before. In addition to the golden royal city that has sprung up, there is more life. Under the governance of Manjit, the soul returned to the golden tree and hundreds of marine soldiers were transformed. Because they had no memory of their previous lives, they naturally regarded themselves as the people of the Golden Kingdom, and started their new lives under the guidance of Manjit and the exiled soldiers. Of course, Huo Shao Shan too, also started a new life. I don't know what expression the marine people will show when they see him if there is a chance in the future. Probably. I didn't expect it, you, Huo Shao Shan with thick eyebrows and big eyes, also became a traitor. At this moment, inside the golden tree. The more I think about it, the more wrong it is. What did I forget? Since the activation of the scarlet corruption, Raymond has been improving his control over this power every day except for normal rest. In addition, he would spend some time thinking about what he had forgotten. It was a particularly unhappy feeling in his heart, 
but he had experienced a lot of things since he woke up after escaping death, so he couldn't remember it for a while. West Blue, Shishi Island. Although it is just an ordinary island, in the eyes of the people living in West Blue, the people on this island are all, devils, who eat people without spitting bones. The territory of the Capone family, one of the five major mafia families in West Blue. The Capone family itself is not one of the five major mafia families, and it is even a family that was created only last year, but it has grown at an unimaginable speed. Not only has it become one of the five major families, but it also has signs of suppressing the other four major families by itself. The reason for this change is entirely because of the new leader of this family, Capone Beige. He has been a crazy guy since he was born, and he likes to hit creatures without resistance and gets excited when he sees the creatures gradually weaken. When he grew up a little, he joined a local mafia with good strength. As a newcomer, he set his sights on the heads of other mafia bosses, and then successfully took their lives. Because of his existence, the power of that mafia family also expanded rapidly. In the end, Capone Bej took away everything from his boss and sat on the throne of the leader himself. And this is the original, Capone family. However, Capone Bej is actually not interested in status, territory, etc. He likes plunder, destruction, and watching others die in powerlessness. Therefore, even if the Capone family is one of the five major families in West Blue, it is a thorn in the eyes and flesh of the other four major families. After all, if the current situation continues, it will not take many years for the Capone family to unify the underground society of West Blue. None of the mafia bosses who have been in high positions for a long time hope that there will be an existence that can suppress them on their heads. Oh, Alan. How is the matter handled? Capone Beige held a knife and fork in his hand, enjoying the delicious lunch in front of him. Standing opposite him was a middle-aged man in his forties, whom he called Alan. According to your plan, Godfather, the Povino family has been caught in internal strife. In three days at most, we can take over everything from them. Really. It seems that we have to find a new toy. I didn't expect that Povino, which is said to be second only to the five major families, is so vulnerable. Capone Beige sneered, and it can be seen that from the beginning, he didn't take the Povino family seriously. After all, in the West Blue area, there are not many mafias that are said to be second only to the five major families, but they are not few. It's just that it's not easy to take action directly against the other four major families now, so he will find those trash to kill time. What do you think the next target is, Godfather? Alan didn't dare to make a decision by himself. He knew very well that the only person in the family who was qualified to make a decision was the Godfather in front of him. After a long silence, Capone Beige grinned and said, why not go with the Pung something Lai family? I heard that their leader is also a zone ability user, which should be more fun. Godfather is right, I'll go down and prepare now. Turning around, Alan planned to leave here. Staying in the same room with the Godfather was too stressful. But he just took two steps and was about to open the door to go out. Bang. A huge force directly kicked the door to pieces, kicking him out with it, and smashing through the wall behind Capone Beige and flying out. As for the person, he probably won't survive. However, such a scene did not scare Capone Beige, but raised his eyebrows with interest. Assassination, I don't know how many times I have experienced it. I just don't know which family is responsible for this time. They really don't know how to learn lessons. Did they have to send people to die? The next moment, Marinia, wearing pure gold armor, walked slowly into the room. The twelve noble knights who came with her did not follow. They looked at each other, and a cold voice came from her mouth, Capone Beige, is it? Huh. This sentence made Capone Beige feel more and more interesting. He was a household name in the West Blue Underground Society. But the woman who came to assassinate him didn't know him. Such an assassination was too unprofessional. It seems to be correct. Based on the other party's reaction at this moment, Marinia can confirm without his answer. Then listen carefully Capone Beige, surrender to the Golden Kingdom, this is your only choice to survive. The Golden Kingdom. I have never heard of this name. When did such a force appear in West Blue? Capone Beige thought about it and found that there was no Golden Kingdom in his family's intelligence, but it doesn't matter. Whether it is to cover up your family or the Golden Kingdom, it makes no difference to me. 
Surrender is the only choice to survive. Ha 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 ha, you specially came to disturb my meal just to tell such a joke. I admit that you are a qualified clown. The moment the voice fell, the doors of the rooms on both sides opened, and hundreds of gangsters with guns rushed out quickly, pointing their guns at Marinia. Ha ha ha, are you scared? Seeing the other party standing there without any movement, Capone Beige laughed again. Open your eyes and see clearly, our forces are totally unequal. Forces. Do you mean these vulnerable ants? Marinia swept her cold eyes, and just this simple sentence made everyone present feel a threat of death. Military strength. Perhaps a large enough military force can indeed produce a qualitative change. But it is obvious that in the eyes of Marinia, the mafia with guns around are far from that level. Buzz. A low hum seemed to come from his prosthetic knife, which made Capone Beige, who originally felt that he had won, tremble in his heart. Shoot. Shoot. Bang. 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 Dozens of gunshots were fired at the same time, and dense bullets rained down on Marinia. But all this became extremely slow in her eyes. Such an attack made it difficult for her to even have the desire to take action. However, it was the will of the God King to subdue the five major families of West Blue. At this moment, Marinia moved. Her figure disappeared in an instant, and when she appeared again, she had already passed through the rain of bullets, holding a long knife and slashing at those Mafia members. The prosthetic knife drew sharp arcs in the air. Every swing meant death to Capone Bege's men. Facing the ghostly figure of Malania, these Mafia had no power to resist and could only fall under the opponent's long knife one after another. Even the members guarding Capone Bege could not escape the fate of being killed by Shinigami. Just a moment. Malania stood among the corpses on the ground, breathing steadily, with extremely cold eyes. The prosthetic knife was on the opponent's shoulder, and a slight movement could make the head roll off. Capone Beige was stunned at this moment. From the time he started to fight in the underground society of West Blue to today, this was the first time he encountered such an unreasonable enemy. Was the force he was proud of just a straw to be harvested at will by the opponent? No. It's impossible. It's just that the troops are not enough. Since the opponent is a strong man that dozens of people can't deal with, then I will gather hundreds or thousands of people. Submission, or death. The cold voice sounded again, and Marinia's hand knife moved slightly, approaching the opponent's neck. Feeling the blood oozing from his neck, Capone Beige raised his head. Ha, huh, ha ha. If you kill me, I'm afraid you can't leave alive. I still have hundreds of men on this island, and my troops are still above yours. Tram, tram, tram. Hearing the footsteps, Capone Beige instantly became confident. Did you hear it? This is my troops, you. He didn't have time to finish pretending, and when he saw the noble knights who walked into this place one by one with bloody blades in their hands, his brain crashed. No. What about his hundreds of men with guns? It's impossible that they were all killed by these guys. Is it so outrageous? This is West Blue, West Blue. It's not the New World. The surroundings have been cleared, Lord Valkyrie. The leading noble knight stepped forward and saluted respectfully, his tone and expression did not fluctuate at all. It was as if for them, getting rid of the hundreds of people on the island was a trivial matter, although not all of them were killed. Yes. Mariania nodded, then raised her prosthetic knife and made a slashing motion. She was in no mood to ask again. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I surrender, I surrender. The sound of breaking through the air emerged, and Capone Beige no longer dared to be arrogant at this moment. He opened his mouth in a hurry, fearing that he would be cut in half if he was slow to beg for mercy. The prosthetic knife stopped in front of Beige's forehead, and then slowly retracted against his skin. Just this one action made him dare not even tremble, for fear that he would lose his life because of his own action. Until the blade finally moved away from him, he dared to breathe heavily. Without looking at the other party, Marinia slowly walked to a chair that was still intact and sat down. I asked you to conquer the other four families, can you do it? This. Capone Beige really couldn't give the other party the answer he wanted. Even before, it was not easy for him to make the other four families surrender, and now. Most of the troops he was proud of were killed just now. The remaining ones, let alone the four major families, he couldn't deal with any of them. I will let the noble knights assist you. If there are strong people, I will also take action once. If you still can't do it, you should know the consequences. 
Please rest assured, Lord Valkyrie, I will definitely unify the five major families of West Blue for you. As a big man who came from the bottom, he may not have other skills, but isn't flattering easy. Watching Capone Beige change from his previous arrogance to his current flattering appearance, a group of noble knights couldn't help but show contempt. This man is shameless, but how shameless can he be? However, thinking of the limb-removing king who was defeated in front of his own Valkyrie, knelt on the ground and begged for mercy. He also kissed her feet to show his obedience, and instantly felt that this mafia boss was not so shameless, right? Watch your words, not for me, but for my god. Marienia was too lazy to look at the humble man, if you can successfully conquer the other four major families, you can meet my god and get the golden blessing. Although it is not clear what kind of existence the, my god, mentioned by Marinia is. I don't know what the golden blessing is. But Capone Beige has a hunch that as long as he completes the task assigned by the Valkyrie, he may be able to get more powerful power and troops. The inner temple of the golden tree. Aren't these mafia members too weak? Raymond looked at the system prompt that popped up, his face full of disappointment. Each of them only has 50 law points, can't they even beat the Marines? And that Capone Beige, a supernova. The law points brought by the belief in gold are only 10,000. Are you kidding me? Complaining is complaining, but it is actually understandable. The Marines who came with Huo Shaoshan before were all elites of Buster Call, and they are definitely not comparable to ordinary mafia. As for Capone Beige, he was a supernova 20 years later, and it is already very good to be worth 10,000 now. What's more, he only has faith, and he has not been hacked to death. If people who have not grown up also have high law points, I will immediately catch those kids to play with. For example, Hancock, Frankie, Trofalgar Law, Robin. Wait, Robin. Robin. Raymond finally remembered what he had forgotten before, it was Robin. As a survivor of O'Hara, Robin, who has a bounty of 79 million, is now suffering in a corner of West Blue, and has been betrayed and abandoned. I am also a survivor of O'Hara. Now that I have established the Golden Kingdom on this land, how can I not bring Robin back? Yes, that's right, I must bring him back, and I can't let Robin suffer outside. I am definitely not greedy for Robin's body in the future. But who should I let find Robin's whereabouts? Thinking of this, Raymond was a little troubled again. How about using this newly acquired law value to reincarnate? Grand Line, Marineford. Naval headquarters is the core of the entire marine organization, and there is always an admiral in charge. However, the current marine, because Zephyr only retains the rank of admiral and serves as an instructor. Garp refused to be promoted to admiral several times, so the current marine actually only has one admiral, that is, Admiral Sengoku who will become a marshal soon. Fire Mountain. In the admiral's office, looking at the information placed in front of him, Sengoku clenched his right hand, and his whole body exuded a terrifying aura. Not long ago, the life card belonging to Fire Mountain stored in naval headquarters was burned out. The person in charge of managing the life cards of Marine senior executives put this bad news in front of him. After learning the news, Sengoku immediately notified some informants in West Blue to investigate O'Hara's situation, and finally summarized it into the text in front of him at this moment. Evil Omen King Mungert. Golden King City. These names do not belong to any force he knows on the sea today. But at this moment, he hated not only the Golden Kingdom, but also the Spandine. If it weren't for that guy, he wouldn't have let Huo Shaoshan go to O'Hara. As the leader of CP9, he didn't even know the other party's intelligence, he was just a waste. Sengoku, Huo Shaoshan is the vice admiral of our marine headquarters, and his revenge must be avenged. At this time, the Vice Admiral Crane, who is also sitting in this office, said in a deep voice, I suggest sending the Admiral directly to destroy the Golden Kingdom. The other party was able to kill Huo Shaoshan, who is the Vice Admiral of the headquarters, which means that his strength is extraordinary. If the Vice Admiral continues to go, there may be meaningless sacrifices. Only by sending the Admiral can we be sure of success. Sengoku knew this too. I know, but the current marines can't spare too much energy to deal with the West Blue issue. As for the Admiral. I can't leave Marineford, and I don't think Zephyr will accept this mission. The great pirate era that Roger set off when he was executed caused a lot of trouble for the marines. 
unless it was a special case like Buster Call. Most Marines were usually scattered around the world to perform tasks. Especially to deal with those pirates who kept entering the Grand Line. It was not realistic for him to allocate troops that could safely deal with the Golden Kingdom. As for the Admiral, it can only be said that those who understand understand. Then Garp. Suru Vice Admiral also understood the current situation of Marines and immediately proposed another idea. With his strength, he can definitely solve this matter. Indeed, if Garp was allowed to take action, there would definitely be no problem, and Sengoku also believed in the strength of his old friend. But the question is, how to get Garp to take action? That guy, even the mention of his name gave him a headache. A few days ago, he asked for a long vacation, saying that he had to take care of his newborn grandson. Under such circumstances, he wanted that guy to leave his grandson to carry out the mission. Haha, ha, it's simply a fantasy. Anyway, Sengoku thinks he doesn't have the face to do so, and Huo Shaoshan certainly doesn't have the face to do so. Even if the world government directly issued an order, that guy would definitely ignore it and treat it as if he didn't hear it. After thinking for a long time, Sengoku could only sigh in his heart and said, let Kuzan go. With his strength, even if he can't avenge Huo Shaoshan, there will be no accidents. In the worst case, we can also get more information about the Golden Kingdom. Since there was no way to get the Admiral to go, we had to settle for the next best thing. Fortunately, the three monsters in their Marine Vice Admiral were growing very fast. If we really talked about strength, they were definitely not worse than the Admiral. Vice Admiral Crane nodded. Now there was nothing to do. Bang. Just as the two were about to discuss other things, the office door was suddenly pushed open. A Marine soldier panting wildly came into their sight. Seeing the appearance of this Marine soldier, Sengoku and Vice Admiral Crane were both shocked. Something big must have happened again. Especially Sengoku, at this moment, he felt extremely tired. Seeing that Brother Kong was about to retire and he was about to become a marshal, couldn't he be quiet? Could it be that because he was going to be a marshal, the disaster came from heaven? Tell me, what happened? Sengoku stroked his forehead, looking a little bit hopeless. Seeing his superior like this, the Marine was a little embarrassed. He knew he came at the wrong time, but... He had to come. Sengoku Admiral, just now Impel Down sent a message that Golden Lion escaped from prison. For a moment, Sengoku was stunned. When he came to his senses, he almost spit out a mouthful of blood. Although I know something big has happened from your look, can you not make it so big? Imperial Down has been established for so many years and no criminal has ever escaped successfully. How come I always encounter all kinds of outrageous things? Sure enough, I shouldn't have paid attention to that idiot Spandine. If I hadn't paid attention to him, Huo Shaoshan wouldn't have died. If Huo Shaoshan hadn't died, Golden Lion wouldn't have escaped from prison, and I wouldn't have fallen to such a heartbreaking point. No matter whether these things are related or not, Sengoku attributed it to Spandine. I feel so sad. Send someone to search for Golden Lion's whereabouts immediately. Once you get the news, don't fight him without authorization. Send the news back to the headquarters and make plans. No matter how uncomfortable it is, Sengoku will not neglect the arrangements he should make. Remember, Golden Lion is a pirate as famous as Whitebeard and Roger. Don't underestimate him. Even if he was imprisoned in Impel Down, a lion is still a lion after all, and it is definitely not an object that can be provoked by pheasants and rabbits. Yes. Also, have someone pay close attention to the movements of Whitebeard, Kaido and Big Mom. Yes. Although it is difficult for these big pirates to unite, Sengoku dare not have a fluke mentality. After all, Golden Lion, Whitebeard, Kaido and Big Mom are all guys from that pirate ship. Monsters from Rock's Pirate. If Golden Lion unites with any of them, it will be a huge trouble for Marine. Now, the plan to send Kuzan to Ohara can only be temporarily cancelled. After all, Golden Lion has to be given priority. Bang. These pirates. After the Marines left, Sengoku finally couldn't suppress his anger and punch the table, they never stopped for a moment. Now I am only an admiral, and I feel very tired. It is hard to imagine what it will be like when I become a marshal. Alas. Why do I suddenly not want to be a marshal? West Blue, Leon Island. One of the islands closest to Ohara, 
controlled by the Davis family, one of the five major families in West Blue. My God, you. Didn't I say it before. Change your name outside, or just call me Raymond. I dare not overstep my bounds. Anyway, you can change your name, call me Master or Young Master. In that case, how about I call you Master? Whatever you want. Raymond waved his hand. He had no good way to deal with this rigid guy, but this was also a reflection of his people's loyalty and faith in him. And if this guy hadn't followed him, even if he talked his mouth off, Mongert would definitely come out with him. As for this knight who followed him, he was naturally reincarnated with the law value provided by the little Karami of the Capone family. Although he was not as good as Marenya and Mongert, he was also a powerful existence. According to Raymond's estimation, he was at least at the level of Vice Admiral of the Headquarters. Zunfu Knight, Finley. A survivor of the Ionian War, and the hero who brought the sleeping Malania back to the Holy Tree. You know, the opponent of the Valkyries in that war was General Shattering Star, who was known as the strongest demigod, and his Red Lion Legion. At the end of the war, in that nearly desperate situation, she repelled all enemies alone, took Malania with her, and walked a long journey. Because of this, with her guard, Mongot was relieved to let Raymond leave the Golden King City temporarily. So, my lord, what is the purpose of our coming here? If it is just to promote the belief in gold, I suggest that we hand it over to the exiled soldiers. To be honest, Fenlei didn't quite understand the thoughts of his own god. In her opinion, as the god king of the Golden Kingdom, she was high up in the temple, and no matter what she did, she only needed to let them do it, so why run out in person? Hearing this, Raymond subconsciously rolled his eyes. He is not the kind of god who has existed for 10,000 years, and his thought realm is not that high, so. It is boring to stay in the temple inside the golden tree all the time, especially now that there are not many people in Ohara, and Marine will not come to cause trouble in the short term. In this case, he might as well come out and hang around. Anyway, Marine and the people of the world government don't know him. Besides, he is in control of the Golden Law and Scarlet Corruption, and his strength is not weak, but he doesn't need to take action under normal circumstances. Of course, this reason must not be told to Finley. Do you think that promoting the belief in gold is worth my personal involvement? After a moment of thought, Ryan's face suddenly became serious. This trip is to find the Queen of Gold. You should understand that, right? God, God, Queen of God. But, Fen Lei was so shocked that he couldn't speak properly, and then he whispered, but isn't Lady Marinia the most suitable to be the Queen of God? Although the voice was small, it was indeed very clear to Raymond, who was already proficient in using observation hockey. It made his mouth twitch twice. How to say this? The Valkyrie Marinia, after he used gold purification on her, suppressed and eliminated the influence of scarlet corruption on her. The skin that was originally eroded by corruption did become extremely smooth, and coupled with her own temperament, it was indeed very charming. But when he thought of the fact that he had been abused thousands of times by Marinia in his previous life, Raymond just wanted to say. I can't afford to offend you, I really can't afford to offend this Valkyrie. But then again, Fenle is also a very beautiful big sister. Let's go, let's ask inside this casino. Raymond didn't intend to tangle with Fenlei about the previous topic. He pointed to the luxurious casino in front of him, which was completely out of the same level as the surrounding buildings, and then took a step. Please come in. The casino guard looked at Raymond, who was wearing a golden robe and followed by a guard knight, and had no intention of stopping him. This kind of person is obviously the young master of a noble family, and is a good fat sheep. As for whether the other party will make trouble. What a joke, this is the property of the Weiss family, and few nobles in the entire West Blue dare to trouble them. Win. Win again. It's amazing, how many times have you won in a row? I don't know, anyway, just follow the bet and it's done. I will win back what I lost a few days ago today. As soon as he entered the casino, Raymond saw a strange phenomenon. Most of the gamblers gathered at the place where they played dice, and they surrounded it for several circles, resulting in few people at other gambling tables. My lord, be careful. There is a strong breath in that group of people over there. Fenlei stood in front of Raymond, and his expression became more solemn. As a noble knight who has participated in countless wars, she is extremely sensitive to the breath of the strong. 
Gambling, winning streak, strong. Putting these elements together, Raymond raised his eyebrows. Could it be that we met that guy? Don't worry, we don't have any hatred with each other. After the voice fell, Raymond walked directly to the side of the dice betting. Through the gap in the crowd, when he saw the betting man clearly, it was beyond his expectations. He has a well-proportioned body and three scars on his left eye. But the most obvious thing is the straw hat on his head and the red hair. It turned out to be him. Red-haired Shanks. One of the four emperors who will dominate the new world in the future, a guy who is connected to the five elders, the highest leaders of the world government, while being a pirate. No, he is still just an ordinary pirate. At most, he is a trainee of the former Roger Pirates. As for why he appeared in West Blue. Raymond was confused. He thought that the one who refreshed in the casino should be Yixiao, but who knew it would be Shanks. At this moment, Shanks turned his head slightly, and the faint breath fell on Finley. Just as Finley sensed him, he also sensed the strength of Finley. The last hand, the last hand. Ha ha, this hand is betting. Please wait a moment. Suddenly, a voice without any emotion came. Those who were going to bet with Shanks immediately scattered after seeing the black-clothed scarred man approaching slowly. Around the dice gambling table, in addition to the casino people and Shanks, there were only Raymond and Finley. I heard that you have great luck and have won more than 200 million Baileys. Scarface walked to the opposite side of Shanks, it's interesting to say that I also like the dice game, but I haven't met an opponent for a long time. I wonder if you are interested in playing a few games with me. Good luck. Shanks smiled slightly when he heard this. He didn't win so many games by luck. He just used his observation hockey to sense it. However, not many people knew about hockey in Sihai. So in the eyes of the scarred man on the opposite side, he probably cheated by some unknown means. Of course, even if he didn't cheat, these guys in the underworld would come to make trouble for him even if he won such a large sum of Bailey. After all, if he really let himself take the money away, the people above would not forgive him. Hey, what should I do if I only plan to play the last hand? Shanks played with the chips in his hand and grinned. Why not just bet all 200 million Baileys on this one hand, what do you think? This sentence surprised the scarred man. He didn't think that the guy in front of him would be the kind of stupid gambler who couldn't see the situation clearly, that is to say. Is this red-haired man in front of him still ready to gamble 200 million Baileys even though he knew that he was coming to make trouble for him? Planning to return 200 million Baileys to his own casino in this way, or... The other party doesn't care about the threat from the Weiss family behind him. HMPH. Since you are so generous, I will accompany you. Waving his hand, his subordinates immediately brought four suitcases to Scarface, opened them all and placed them on the gambling table. Here are 400 million Baileys. As long as you can win, they will all belong to you. As long as you have the ability to take it away. 400 million Baileys is almost all the property of this casino, which is not a small amount for the Weiss family. No problem. Shanks pushed down all the chips in front of him, his face full of confidence. However, Scarface did not start the bet immediately, but turned his head to Raymond and Finley. If you two do not intend to participate, please leave first. As soon as he finished speaking, Raymond sat directly on the left of Shanks, supporting his chin with one hand. Since you insist on inviting me, I will also make a simple bet. How about 100 million Baileys? The bill will be charged to, the Bongola family. There are so many mafias in West Blue, and the other party will not be able to figure out a name for a while. And it doesn't matter even if they figure it out later. After all, it shouldn't take too long for Marinia to make the five major families surrender. Oh, so you are from the Bongola family. Raymond, who was originally smiling, was stunned by Scarface's words. No, this West Blue really has a Bongola family. Could it be that their leader is a man with gloves, fire on his head, and a baby in a suit as a tutor? Clang, clang. The sound of the dice cup shaking called Raymond back from his wild thoughts. For a moment, everyone present held their breath, especially Raymond and Shanks, who directly activated observation hockey to sense. Although Scarface didn't know hockey, his skill in shaking the dice cup was extraordinary. Bang! The dice cup fell on the table, as if an invisible air wave was spreading around. Scarface raised his head, 
placed his left hand on the table not far from the dice cup, and raised his other hand slightly, please place your bets, both of you. Big. Shanks made the decision without hesitation, and the smile on his face did not change at all. Believe that he can win. Or does he not take the amount of 200 million baileys seriously? In that case, I'll bet big too. Raymond also clearly sensed the points in the dice cup, but he also knew that the Scarface on the opposite side would definitely make a move in a while. But since the future four emperors are so confident, why not give him some face? Wait, why do I feel like I'm giving face to red hair by following the bet? Well, there's a strange feeling. Is this the power that the face fruit ability user unconsciously emits? Buzz. A very slight sound, a sound that normal people probably wouldn't be able to detect even if they were sitting next to Scarface. But at this moment, it was clearly heard by Raymond, Shanks, and Finley. There's no doubt that Scarface was using the Senju method to change the number of dice in the dice cup. Buy it and leave. Open. The smile on the face of the one who opened the dice cup disappeared in an instant, replaced by surprise and paleness. Impossible. I just changed the number of dice, why? Ha ha ha, four, five, six, big. Shanks supported the table with both hands, leaned forward, and laughed the moment he, saw, the number of dice, today's luck is really good. Winning is winning, but neither Shanks nor Raymond reached out to take the 400 million baileys. They are not children who know nothing about the world. If they want to take away the bailey that belongs to them, it is not enough to just win the dice points. Huh. Scarface exhaled a foul breath, and then showed a self-deprecating smile. I thought I could win on the table, but I didn't expect that I would have to use a simpler and more direct method. Other guests in the casino had already, voluntarily left. After he finished speaking, dozens of mafia armed with knives and guns immediately surrounded Raymond and his friends. Boy from the Vongola family, for the sake of your elders, I allow you to leave. Although the Weiss family is one of the five major families in West Blue and is powerful, his status is not qualified to decide to go to war with the mafia that is second only to the five major families. As for the red-haired boy who seems to have no identity background, don't think about walking out safely. It seems that the reputation of the Weiss family is not very good. Raymond leaned back slightly and leaned back on the chair easily. Not only the reputation, but also the eyesight is not good. You don't think that these people can deal with this red-haired brother? Ah. Ha ha. My friend, you really think highly of me. Shanks pressed his straw hat with one hand, and the moment he raised his head, his eyes became extremely sharp, but these people can still be dealt with. Since you don't want to leave, then, go to hell. Scarface stood up from the card table, and two short swords on his waist came out at the same time. Accompanying his actions, the surrounding mafia also rushed up immediately. With these miscellaneous soldiers, red-haired conquerors. Why did this guy rush up? Raymond was waiting to see Shank's hockey show, but he never expected that the red-haired man would directly draw his sword and rush out, intending to fight these mafia head-on. Could it be that this guy hasn't awakened conqueror's hockey yet? But this shouldn't be. This is a red-haired guy. You are an idiot who offends me, my master. Just when Raymond was speechless about Shanks's action, Finley had already taken off the weapon behind him. With a halo sickle in one hand and a short sword in the other, the majestic murderous aura instantly filled the entire casino. Even if you just look at her, you can seem to see the mountains of corpses and seas of blood she has stepped on. Pa, 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 hey. Stop pretending to be dead, open your eyes. If you admit that you don't know the person above, I won't kill you if you have any news about this girl, how about that? Raymond slapped the unconscious Scarface several times in the face, and put the wanted poster of Little Robin directly in front of him. As for the mafia around, I can only say that they should all thank Shanks. Because the guys knocked down by Shanks just fainted, and those who fought with Finley. No one was left alive. Scarface, whose face was almost slapped into a pig's head, finally opened his eyes. After carefully looking at the wanted poster, he said, Zumikoku ke omujuji, this is the son of the devil. Well, if he said it in his current state, anyone with low cultural literacy would not understand it at all. Raymond was a little proud in his heart. He was a scholar of Ohara, and he could still understand this, dialect. After a period of difficult, intracranial translation, 
Raymond finally squeezed out the value of this guy. According to the information provided by Scarface, Robin did appear on this island before. But a few days ago, he followed a merchant ship to Red Grape Island, and now he should still be there. But the people on the merchant ship also recognized Robin's identity and notified Marine when they went to Red Grape Island. Fenlay. Raymond stood up and walked directly out of the casino. He promised not to kill this Scarface, but he didn't promise not to let Finlay do it. Just after walking out of the casino, Shanks, who was holding a bottle of wine at the door, said softly, Friend, you have a relationship with O'Hara, right? Why do you say that? It's also possible that I'm a bounty hunter who wants to exchange Robin for money, right? Raymond himself didn't think of hiding this. Today's O'Hara is no longer the gathering place of scholars who were powerless before. The concern in your eyes for that little girl is not the emotion that a bounty hunter would have. Shanks turned his head, his eyes flickering, by the way, why don't you be my partner? I can help you save the little girl, and then how about we go out to sea together? And I heard that there is a very powerful guy in East Blue, and I am preparing to invite him. When the time comes, we will definitely be able to form a free pirate group together. Raymond didn't expect that Shanks would suddenly invite him. If he was not the god king of the Golden Kingdom, or if this guy appeared before the buster call, he would definitely agree immediately without any hesitation. Although the Red Hair Pirates have not been truly established yet, there is no doubt that they have the strength to protect O'Hara survivors like himself and Robin. And the powerful guy in East Blue mentioned by the other party should be the sniper Yusuf. Pirates. Raymond looked up at the sky. Forget it, although I will set foot on the vast ocean sooner or later, I probably won't be a pirate. You are obviously in your teens, why do you talk like an old man? He pursed his lips, but Shanks didn't care about being rejected. Although we can't be companions, it's okay to make friends, right? 300 million is enough for me. As he said that, he handed a suitcase in his hand to Raymond. He came to the casino to earn some money for the trip to East Blue and save some money for shipbuilding. He couldn't follow the behavior of his captain before, who had nothing but got Rayleigh for free, right? Friends. No problem. After taking the suitcase of 100 million Baileys, Finley had already walked out. Raymond chuckled and said, but I'm in a hurry now. Let's sit down and have a drink when we have time. Well, I have to go to East Blue too. Shanks nodded. Goodbye. Waving his hand, Raymond took Finley and walked towards the port. By the way, for the sake of 100 million Baileys, you have a chance to use your fruit ability here, don't forget it. Watching the two people walking away, Shanks' face was full of confusion. After a long silence, he muttered to himself, fruit ability. I don't think I have eaten devil fruit. West Blue, Mon Island. This island is only the size of an ordinary villa, and usually there are only a dozen servants or slaves responsible for cleaning and guarding. However, these guards are not simple. Even the weakest among them has the level of marine officers. In the sea area of West Blue, anyone with a little status dare not approach this island easily. Because this is the common property of the five major families of West Blue, there is only one end if you approach it casually. Today, five luxury ships docked at Mon Island, and each ship was flying a flag that symbolized its family. The Weiss family, the Capone family, the Yanni family, the Leslie family, and the Bell family. There is no doubt that they are the five major mafias that rule the underground society of West Blue. They will only come to Mon Island for meetings that require the joint attendance of the heads of the five major families. And no matter how many men they bring, at the moment of stepping on Mon Island, in addition to the head of the family, there can only be one guard to follow. Capone Beige, you suddenly called a meeting. What's the big deal that requires us to come forward? Wes Bennett, with a cigar in his mouth, looked unhappy. As the oldest family in the Mafia, he always looked down on Capone Beige, a young man who was lucky enough to get to this day. If he hadn't been worried about the other three families, he would have destroyed Capone Beige's faction long ago. And standing behind him on the right at this moment was a white-haired old man wearing Wanokuni clothes and a long sword on his waist. This old man was his personal bodyguard. When he was young, he was favored by Bennett's father and was loyal to the Weiss family. Don't be so angry, Master Bennett. In another position, a chubby middle-aged man with a kind face gently stroked the dazzling gem ring on his hand, 
After all, Bej is the leader of one of the five major families and is qualified to initiate a meeting of the five major families. And I believe that Bej actually used the right to initiate a meeting, and he definitely didn't want to talk to us about trivial matters. Whether it was his tone or expression, this guy was extremely hypocritical. But everyone present knew that the leader of the Bell family had always looked like this. A disgusting smiling tiger. Ha ha, Chief Bell is right. If it's not something particularly important, I certainly won't bother you. Capone Bej lit a cigar and tapped his right fingers on the table, so, I won't beat around the bush. The purpose of this meeting is to tell you a good news. I hope that the five major families of West Blue, including my own Capone family, will all submit to the Kingdom of Gold. I've finished speaking, who's in favor and who's against. Huh. Capone Bej. Are you crazy and talking nonsense? Wes Bennett stood up suddenly. If it's just such stupid talk, then there is no need to continue this meeting. Just when he turned around and planned to leave directly, Capone Bej sat steadily in the chair and said calmly, Boss Weiss, do you mean to oppose my proposal just now? Tisk, yes, I oppose. Really, don't know whether to live or die. Capone Bej looked at the other party as if he was looking at a dead person, and then clapped his hands. In the blink of an eye, the door of the room was kicked open, and six noble knights rushed in quickly, some holding spears and some holding rapiers. Twelve people burst out with a strong aura at the same time, directly covering the mafia bosses present. Even the guards who followed them frowned. The only one who didn't react much was Weiss Bennett's guard. Although he also felt that these noble knights were extraordinary, they would not pose any threat to him as a swordsman. Seeing the indifferent look of his guard, Bennett was confident, Hee hee, Capone Bege, do you think you are the first guy who wants to overturn the table on Mon Island? I thought you could reach the same level as us, and you should be a smart guy, but today. I am really disappointed. Do you know? From now on, you and your family will be destroyed by our four major families together. Kill them. At the command, the swordsman beside Bennett quickly drew his sword, but at this moment. Puff. Accompanied by the sharp blade, the sound of blood gushing broke into the ears of everyone present. The long sword had not yet been completely out of the body, and the swordsman's guard's neck had been cut by the sharp blade, and the spurting blood sprinkled on Capone Beige and the heads of the other three major families. As for Bennett, like his guards, his eyes were wide open with disbelief and confusion. He had no idea what happened just now. Thump, thump, thump. The sound of metal footsteps colliding sounded, and the guard, who was standing behind Bej slowly walked to the position that originally belonged to Bennett and sat down. The blood on her artificial knife that had not yet been wiped off also proved that the death of the two people just now was caused by her. Even the gangster bosses who have been in the underworld for many years and have seen many big scenes were so scared that they couldn't speak at this moment. They all knew how strong Bennett's guard was, but now he has become a corpse. This guy in golden armor was able to kill Bennett and his guard when no one could react. Doesn't that mean? As long as the other party is willing, their lives can be taken away at any time. Before these gangsters could react, six more Zunfu knights walked into the room. Unlike the six just now, the few who just came in were covered in blood. One of them walked to Marenia's side and knelt on one knee. Lady Valkyrie, the outside has been cleaned up. Cleaned up. No one would think that these knights were just cleaning the villa. The so-called cleaning. It should refer to the guards on the island and the men they brought this time, right? Even the smiling tiger of the Bell family couldn't keep a smile on his face now. He looked at Capone Bej in horror, as if asking. When did you have such a powerful force? The Valkyrie killed Bennett and his guards, and the twelve noble knights suppressed the whole scene. Capone Bej felt that the time was almost right. Hee hee, I think you should all be able to see the situation clearly. Although it is easy for me to take over the power of your families as long as I get rid of you, what I want is submission, so I ask again reluctantly. Who is in favor and who is against? I don't know if it is because of Marenia's words and deeds, Bej, who has not yet been to the Golden King City to meet Raymond, also began to use the title, My God. However, his title fell into the ears of the others, but it had a different meaning. God, could it be that you rely on celestial dragons? The leader of the Leslie family couldn't help asking at this moment. In this world, the existence that can be called God 
in his impression is only the celestial dragons who are high in Mariajoy, have all the privileges, and regard themselves as, descendants of the Creator. If Bej is really behind a world noble, then they can only surrender at this moment, and they dare not have the slightest thought of rebellion in the future. Although they are the leaders of one of the five major families in West Blue, this identity is not even worth a fart in the eyes of the world nobles. Those big figures in Mariajoy only need to wave their hands to make them and the families behind them become insignificant dust in history. Not. Don't compare those dogs and pigs with my god. If you dare to say such offensive words again, you will die. Mariania's eyes condensed, and the extremely terrifying momentum instantly swept the whole place, suppressing several gangsters. I surrender. I surrender too. Under this momentum, the leaders of the Yanni family and the Bell family chose to surrender one after another. Their two families were already in the middle and lower ranks among the five major families, and their strength was much weaker than that of the Weiss family and the Leslie family. Now that they had seen the strength of the other party, they had no choice but to surrender. More importantly, they were very interested in the so-called God in the other party's mouth. Maybe that God could bring them greater benefits. At this time, Chief Leslie finished his imagination and raised his hand and said, I surrender too. His thoughts were different from those of the other two family leaders. In his opinion, although Marinia denied that the God was the celestial dragons. But he felt that the existence that could allow Capone Bej to become one of the five major families in just a few years, and could also provide such a powerful fighting force to help Bej, and had the title of God, must be the celestial dragons. That's right, in his speculation, the reason why Capone Bej could rise so quickly must be because of the celestial dragons. Perhaps the big man had some considerations, or did not want to expose his noble identity, so he asked his subordinates to deny it. As for calling other celestial dragons pigs and dogs. What a joke, ordinary people like them don't dare to call them that, so what if celestial dragons call other celestial dragons that? Why bother, the ability to insult other celestial dragons also means that the world noble who supports Capone Bej has a very important position even in Mariajoy. Is this Red Grape Island? After getting off the boat, Raymond saw a lot of grapevines around the town. The grapes on these vines were blood-colored and extremely red. Kill Mafia members and get 1,000 law points. Kill Mafia members and get 1,000 law points. Kill Wes Bennett and get 5,000 law points. Kill Shanshang and get 13,000 law points. As soon as he got off the boat, a series of system prompts sounded. Raymond almost knew that Marlinia's mission should be completed soon. There is just one thing I don't understand. What is that Shanshang? It's worth 13,000 law points. Isn't this the value of Marine General? And the dozen or so Mafia members worth 1,000 law points are also very attractive. Adding the law points provided by these waves of Mafia together, I should be able to reincarnate into a good citizen again. My lord. At this moment, Finley exclaimed softly, his eyes fixed on the large ship not far away. Following his gaze, the ship docked there was a Marine warship. And judging from the size of this warship, it is still a rear admiral level, but it should have little to do with the naval headquarters. It is most likely a marine rear admiral stationed in West Blue. It is estimated that except for the so-called weakest East Blue, the other three seas have marines of the general level, and there may be more than one. Of course, the marine rear admirals of the four seas are definitely not at the same level as those performing missions in the Grand Line or even the New World. The marine warship is still here, which means they haven't found Robin yet. Through this warship, Raymond can also judge some situations. Fenlay, you immediately look for Robin's traces, and after finding her, protect her safety and bring her to the dock. Secondly, find out the people on the merchant ship where Robin was before, and you should know how to deal with them. Yes, but. Fenlay did not leave immediately, but hesitated. If I leave, who will protect the master? How come you are the same as Monjit? Do you think there are people on this island who can threaten me? Raymond was relieved and helpless at the same time for his people's concern for him. He raised his hand, and the rich and dazzling gold condensed in his palm. As a citizen of gold, Finlay could naturally feel the power of this force. In addition to the expression of her own god, she knew that no matter how much she persuaded, nothing would change. After bowing slightly, she immediately began to search on the island. After Finlay left, 
Raymond sat cross-legged on the spot and used his observation hockey to monitor the surroundings. At the same time, he silently sorted out some information he had obtained from the past few reincarnations using the system. Basically, if the law value is too low, the reincarnation will be a miscellaneous soldier, such as a prison soldier, while a law value of tens of thousands can be reincarnated into a hero like Finley. As for a being like Marlenia who is at the 13th throne, at least 50,000 law values must be started before it is possible to reincarnate. And now, I have more than 52,000 law values. First of all, thank the five major families of West Blue for sending rockets. Do you want to reincarnate again? Raymond was a little entangled. He originally planned to save up 100,000 before the next reincarnation, but now. Fenlay's strength is indeed unquestionable. It is inefficient to rely on her alone to search for Robin's whereabouts on this island. It is easy to fail to reincarnate with only 50,000 law values. What am I thinking about? Can't you tell who is more important, little Robin or law value? Raymond shook his head, and his thoughts suddenly became clear. Little Robin can be raised, and can the law value be kept to give birth to a baby? Use all the law value to reincarnate. Consume 52,300 law points to reincarnate. For this reincarnation, Raymond can say that he has no extra requirements. If he reincarnates into one of the 13 thrones, that would be great, or the existence of a hero like Finley is also acceptable. At the very least, transforming a large number of Legion soldiers can also make it easier to search for the whereabouts of Little Robin. Ding. This reincarnation has been successful. Moon Princess, Lonnie. Activate the attached Law Knight Law. Obtain Weapon, Dark Moon Greatsword. Obtain Item, Dark Moon Ring. Golden Law Control Improvement. Side Quest Progress, 13 Thrones, 3 13 Activate the Mall, Reward Gold Advent 1. Lonnie's wife. Several question marks suddenly appeared on Raymond's head. He didn't have any hope for this reincarnation, and he fell into a stagnation. When I played the card drawing game before I crossed over, was I so lucky? Which time is it not a big guarantee to ship? What's the situation now? Did heaven defying change fate after crossing? Not only did she reincarnate directly into Lonnie, but she also brought a dowry with her. In a flash, the golden light emerged in front of her, and as the light faded, the light of the stars and the night surfaced. At the same time, the thirteen thrones in the O'Hara Golden King City, one of the three seats belonging to the Apostles of God, also emitted light. Dressed in a snow-white magician's robe, even the puppet body is as beautiful as an elf, and the left eye is like a deep starry sky, with a mystery that makes people want to explore the mystery. What? You said that Lonnie's body has four hands, which does not conform to normal aesthetics. What a joke. When she hugged me, she could also hold my hand, which was a beautiful thing. Are you, my king? The cold voice slowly rose, and there was no extra expression on Lonnie's face, and her tone did not change, but people could feel a hint of joy. I am very happy. I am very glad that the king I serve is you. No problem, the god king is also a king. I am also very glad that Lonnie is my apostle. After saying this, Raymond felt a little embarrassed. He used this reincarnation mainly to let people help search for the whereabouts of little Robin on this island, but the reincarnated one was Lonnie. This is a bit wrong. Let Lonnie, my wife, help find the future concubine. Hmm. There shouldn't be a rooftop where you will be beheaded in the pirate world, right? Ahem. Thinking of this, Raymond felt a chill on his neck and coughed twice. He took out the bounty order and handed it to the other party. Ronnie, I need to find the girl above. Well, I understand. Since it is the king's idea, I will naturally achieve it for you. Ronnie was still calm, turned around to face the island, and then raised one hand to the sky. Deep power emerged from her fingertips, and after a moment, the light of the stars spread all over the red Puerto Island. After a moment, Lonnie's voice sounded again, My king, I have found her. However, the girl seems to be in danger. Found her in such a short time. I can only say that Lonnie is worthy of being able to be on the 13th throne under her own golden law. Much more powerful than big sister Finley. Fenley. After all, I made a mistake. Okay, let's go there immediately. Raymond stood up and planned to get to Robin as quickly as possible. From Buster Call to now, Robin must have suffered a lot during this period of time, right? 
But after a while, Lonnie did not mean to trigger, but raised one hand, as if waiting for something. Hmm. Could it be that she wanted to? As if to confirm his guess, Raymond held Lonnie's raised hand, and sighed in his heart that the craftsmanship of the doll was really amazing. It's obviously a doll, but the touch is no different from that of a real person, and it's even more delicate. I just don't know if Lonnie will spin in circles. And Lonnie, whose hand was held, actually showed a smile on her face that had never changed. There is no doubt that this is exactly what she expected. After holding Lonnie's hand, she no longer hesitated, wrapped herself in Raymond with the light of the stars, and quickly rushed to where Robin was. Who? Who? Ah. In the forest of Honku Island, Robin hid behind a big tree and panted. She was not in such a good health to begin with, and she was almost exhausted after running here. But before she could take two breaths, she immediately covered her mouth and nose with her hands, fearing that she would be discovered by Marine because of a little sound. Since the day she left Ohara, she had thought about giving up several times. Anyway, now she was the only one left, it would be easier to die. But although she was young, she knew in her heart. She was the last scholar of Ohara. If she died, Ohara would really have no trace. What's more, Saul sacrificed his life in exchange for her escape and survival. If she was caught by Marine and died like this, how could she be worthy of Saul? At this moment, she was not as desperate as she would be in the future. Be careful. Don't think that the other party is easy to deal with just because she is a little girl. That is the demon that destroyed six marine warships. Marine, wearing the rear admiral cloak, reminded his men loudly at this moment, and he was also walking in the front to search. With his strength, it was not a big problem to face a 79 million bounty criminal. Even if there was really danger, he could buy time for his men to react. Soon, Marine Rear Admiral stopped and locked his eyes on a big tree in front of the right. Found it. As a Rear Admiral, he naturally practiced hockey, but he was only good at observation hockey. He did not rush forward in a hurry, but drew out the long sword at his waist and chose a more stable way to deal with it. He clenched his hands tightly, and then slashed with a knife, and the sharp sword energy rushed out and went straight to Robin. Ah. Robin screamed and started to run away. But just after taking two steps forward, she suddenly bumped into something. Being blocked at this moment, it was impossible to continue to escape. She closed her eyes and couldn't help crying, Saul. At this moment, a warm arm embraced her, and a familiar and gentle voice sounded in her ears. Don't be afraid anymore, Robin, I will protect you in the future. This voice. Raymond. Not knowing whether it was the warmth in her arms or the familiar voice, little Robin suddenly stopped crying and raised her head. She saw the familiar boy and the golden light flashing in his eyes. Boom. The golden light turned into a barrier, easily blocking the marine rear admiral's slash. But at this moment, the gold did not have the usual soft feeling, but became sacred. Cold. Raymond held Robin in his arms, stood up and walked forward, his expression was extremely cold. My king. Let me do this, Lonnie. Continue to move forward. Before he took a step, the light in Raymond's eyes became more dazzling, but the murderous intent emanating from his body became more terrifying. You have to let me avenge little Robin and O'Hara, right? O'Hara people. Okay, okay, a Robin is in front of us, right? The Marine Rear Admiral was extremely panicked. The breath emanating from the boy opposite made him feel the threat of death. It can even be said that he felt like an ant in front of the boy. As long as the other party gently crushed him with his fingers, he would immediately turn into ashes. Robin, look carefully. Whether it is marine or world government, sooner or later they will pay the price for the destruction of O'Hara. As soon as the voice fell, Raymond took a step forward and actually directly crossed a distance of more than 10 meters and appeared behind the marine rear admiral. Beside him, 13 golden lightsabers condensed at some point. Ah. Just when the marine rear admiral opened his mouth and was about to shout something, he suddenly felt a pain in his back and screamed. He lowered his head and saw a long sword formed by the gathering of golden light, piercing his chest. Without giving him any time to react, another lightsaber pierced through his neck. This time, even if he opened his mouth, he could no longer make any sound. He only felt that the scene in front of him was quickly shrouded in darkness, and finally fell to the ground. Even before he died, the Marine Rear Admiral didn't figure out where Raymond came from. 
Where did West Blue get such a strong man? When did he go from a hunter chasing bounty criminals to the prey of this young man? Seeing the tragic death of his rear admiral, almost all of his marine soldiers were scared out of their wits. Except for a few who dared to raise their weapons and attack Raymond. The others began to flee in all directions, while praying in their hearts that Raymond would chase and kill others. It's a pity that this wish is too beautiful. From the moment he saw Robin crying, Raymond had decided to kill all the marines here with his own hands. As the golden light in his eyes became brighter and brighter, thirteen golden swords flew in all directions, madly harvesting the lives of these marines. The prompts for obtaining the law value sounded one after another, but he didn't care at all. The thought that emerged in his mind at this moment was too slow. With a sigh, Raymond slowly raised his right hand, and the extremely majestic golden power rushed out of his body and condensed into a crazy rotating halo in his hand. Seeing this scene, Lonnie slowly flew into the air. She knew what would happen next. As Raymond's raised right hand suddenly swung down, the golden halo instantly expanded and became larger, with the former as the center, everything in all directions. Whether it was the marine soldiers, the towering trees, or even the surrounding mountains, they were all cut in half at this moment. On the boat at the Red Grape Island Pier, Raymond comforted the emotional little Robin. He thought that she almost fell into the hands of Marine, or that the bloody scene just now scared little Robin. In fact, it had nothing to do with his guess. Robin was indeed afraid, but at this moment she was so emotional that she couldn't help crying, just because she was holding Raymond who didn't want to let go. Originally, in her eyes, O'Hara was destroyed by Buster Call. Mother Albia, Dr. Kroba, Saul and others were gone. She was the only one left in this world, but the appearance of Raymond broke this despair. From that moment on, Robin knew that he was no longer alone. My lord, those guys have. Fenlay, who had just stepped onto the deck, was stunned by the scene in front of him. Before he finished speaking, he turned to look at Lonnie, who was accompanying his god, and asked respectfully, Lady Lonnie, what is the lord doing? Although he didn't know when the moon princess came, he knew that she was one of the thirteen thrones and the apostle of his god, so Finlay would naturally respect her. Lonnie shook her head and didn't answer, but just stood quietly beside Raymond. That look was like a virtuous wife accompanying her husband. Looking at this scene, Finlay couldn't help sighing. Why do you feel that your Valkyrie can't compete with this moon princess? Alas, there is a long way to go. Realizing that Finlay had returned, Raymond knew that the task assigned to him must have been completed. Those merchants who notified the marine to capture Robin in order to earn a bounty all became the dead souls under the sword of Fenlay. Okay little Robin, let's go back to O'Hara. Raymond raised his hand to wipe the tears from Robin's face, although O'Hara is different now, it is still our home, and, it will never be destroyed by anyone again. With the current strength of the Golden Kingdom, even if the Buster Call comes again, O'Hara will never be destroyed. On the contrary, those marines who execute the buster call will be buried in the depths of the sea one by one. Well, go back, O'Hara. A soft voice came out, and after saying this, Robin, who was relaxed all over, closed her eyes and fell asleep. She didn't know how much suffering she had experienced these days, and she didn't dare to relax her vigilance even when she slept. Only at this time, by Raymond's side, did she have the opportunity to relax and rest. After rubbing Robin's little head, Raymond held her and handed her to Finley, take her to the cabin to have a good rest. Yes, you too. Ah, thank my God. Feeling warm in his heart, Finley took Robin and walked towards the cabin, leaving the deck to his own god and the moon princess. Ronnie, I'll take a break for a while. Raymond sat at the bow, and Renee sat beside him naturally, letting him lean his head on her body without saying anything. Then Raymond said in his heart, let me see what good stuff is sold in this mall. The system mall opened, and at first glance, he saw an incredible thing, Amber Potion. Anyone who has played this branch line in the magic circle will probably be deeply affected by this thing. According to the original words of the magic professor Selvies who developed this potion. Let Rene drink this potion, and you can realize the, secret. Then you can get a superior puppet and enjoy her beauty. So what kind of thing is this potion? It depends on one's own opinion. Raymond looked at the potion and felt disgusted. I don't know if that wretched guy, Selvies, will be reincarnated in the future. 
If he is reincarnated, I will cut him into pieces and write my name backwards. It is a heinous crime to plot against Lani's wife. As for whether I can use the amber potion. Are you kidding me? Do I need to use this potion on my wife? Without looking at the amber potion again, he looked at other things in the mall. Many of them are weapons, props and skills in the magic circle. For example, the meteorite staff, the golden lost sword, the comet Azel, the Kalia swift sword, etc. But as he continued to read, Raymond's heartbeat suddenly accelerated. Because he saw many things below that did not belong to the magic circle world, but there were simple explanations below these things. Either they conform to the concept of gold, or the concept of corruption, or they are related to the concept of the night stars. In other words, these things that do not belong to the magic circle world are attributed to the law controlled by Raymond under the blessing of the system. However, in addition to requiring high law points, these things also require control over the laws to which they belong. For example, the king's treasure requires 30% control over the golden law. Wait. 30%. After reincarnating into Lani, my control over the Golden Law has been further improved, and it has already reached 30%. Take another look. Well, 100,000 law points, I really can't afford it. So many law points are enough to reincarnate a strong man ranked in the 13th throne. Poor. Thinking of this, Raymond subconsciously said what was in his mind. Just opening his eyes. No, why did I lie on Lani's legs? Since I lie at this angle, then, it shouldn't be. How can I see Lonnie's face? My king, does he need worldly wealth? Lonnie didn't quite understand why a god would have such an idea. Anyway, she herself didn't need it. Ah. Uh, Raymond was a little embarrassed at the moment, but he still had to maintain his image as a god. Ahem, it's not about the desire for wealth, but the belief in gold. The five major families of West Blue completely surrendered, and offering faith can provide a lot of law points, but faith is something that can't be rushed. If you really want to make a fortune, you have to rely on killing rewards. But if Marine and World Government don't come to make trouble, there will be only one target left in West Blue to quickly earn law points. The Kingdom of Flowers. The overlord of West Blue, a country with a strong naval force. The most famous one among them is the Eight Treasures Navy led by the great pirate, Cone Pepper, who has a bounty of 542 million. Well, it's decided. The Kingdom of Flowers must be taken down, and the only thing to consider now is who to let do it. Marlenia, or Monjet. My king, if necessary, I can also be the executor of God's will. Hem. Raymond stared at Lonnie with wide eyes, as if asking if she could read minds. I can't read minds. Huh. Then how do you know? Because everything is written on your face, my king. Ohara, the golden royal city. The towering golden trees shed light, covering and protecting this land with the golden law. It has been two months since Buster Call, and it has been more than a month since Robin returned to Ohara. Now this island, which was destroyed by Buster Call not long ago, has regained its vitality. There are newly reclaimed lands around the royal city. Those, marine, who have returned and washed under the golden light are now wearing simple clothes and living a life of farming or grazing like ordinary people. To be honest, when bringing Robin back, Raymond asked him whether he wanted to get rid of all these people. Although these people have been washed by the golden law after returning, except for their appearance, they have nothing to do with marine. But as long as Robin speaks, Raymond will not hesitate to get rid of these people who already belong to him. But little Robin is still kind and gives these people a chance to continue living. You two are here again. Walking into the library of the royal city, Raymond looked as if he had expected it, looking at the two figures, one big and one small, reading and studying books. Robin, and Lonnie. Since the third day back in O'Hara, the two have been staying in the library most of the time, sometimes even eating and sleeping. The books in this library are all from the library of the Tree of All-Knowing. After the Golden Royal City was built, Raymond deliberately asked people to store those, treasures, in the library of the Royal City. But he himself has never come to see it once. If it weren't for Robin and Lonnie, he probably wouldn't have walked into this place until now. My king, is there something wrong? Lonnie put down the book, looked up at Raymond, and her gentle voice was like a spring breeze. Robin, on the other hand, had no reaction at all. This girl was completely immersed in the sea of books. Nothing, 
I was just thinking that it's almost time to take action against the Kingdom of Flowers. During this period of waiting, he gained a lot of law points for believing in the Golden Law, of course, a large part of which was provided by the five major Mafia families. Especially after Capone Beige followed Marinia to the Golden King City for an audience and received the Golden Blessing. With such an example in front of him, it was much easier to spread the faith within the five major families. And these law points, he basically reincarnated once with 10,000 points, to fill the gaps in the middle and lower level forces. After a while, Raymond sat next to Lonnie and once again experienced the benefits of puppets. Look, Lonnie held her own hands while holding the book in both hands. Just ask if ordinary people can do it. The kingdom of flowers is in our hands. There is not much to worry about, my king. Lonnie has learned a lot about the situation in this world through books during this period, especially the major forces and countries on the West Blue side. In her opinion, although the Kingdom of Flowers is powerful in West Blue, it cannot stop the spread of the Golden Law. Indeed, let. His eyes changed slightly, and then Raymond changed his tone. Guests are coming. Or, special guests. The giants who were supposed to transfer historical documents did not show up, but these two came first. Interesting. Lonnie, who also sensed that someone had set foot in O'Hara, slowly closed the book in her hand, stood up and walked outside. As an apostle of God, it is one of her duties to receive visitors for God. But not everyone is qualified to be guided by an apostle. If Raymond hadn't said the word, special, she would not have come out in person. Raymond glanced at Robin, who was still reading and had no other reaction, and left the library. Those two guests are indeed special and qualified to meet the Golden God King. This is. O'Hara. Jumping off the boat, looking at the island and city in front of him covered by golden light, he couldn't help but make a sound of surprise and disbelief. Wearing a suit and sunglasses, the most notable feature is the huge head that is taller than ordinary people, and the protruding mouth that extends to the abdomen. When he sensed him, Raymond gave a, special, evaluation. And for this world, he is indeed a very special existence. The man with the world's first brain, surpassing the technology of this world for 500 years, Vegapunk. It can only be described as a miracle, right? The island destroyed by Buster Call is now emitting golden light. Even a genius like him had to exclaim at this moment. Before coming, he thought O'Hara was already a ruin. Even if someone had established some power here, it would definitely not be much better. After all, it would take a long time for an island destroyed by Buster Call to recover to its previous state. Not to mention that it is more prosperous than the previous O'Hara, as he saw with his own eyes. Boom boom. Suddenly, the thunderous sound of horse hooves came, scaring Vegapunk. Then, the knight, who was as majestic and huge as an unshakable mountain, rushed in front of him. Outsider, you are not a golden people, why are you setting foot in the golden territory? The tree guard held a spear and pointed directly at this guy with an extremely conspicuous head. It was the first time he saw a head like this, a, uh, human. I'm just here to pay tribute to an old friend. While speaking, Vegapunk also picked up the bouquet in his hand and shook it to prove his purpose. He and Kroba, also known as Dr. Clover, have met several times and can be considered friends. The tree guard does know something about the past of this island but he will not listen to this weird as one-sided words, stop here and I will give you an answer after asking for instructions. No need to do that, he is a special guest. At this moment, accompanied by the shining starlight, the figure of Lonnie appeared beside the tree guard. Another guest, is he also here to pay tribute? Another. The tree guard was slightly stunned, he didn't sense that there were other people here. But since it was said by the messenger of God, there is naturally no need to doubt it. Ah. What a keen perception, hockey of observation. The man in the green cloak came out at this moment, holding a bouquet of flowers in his hand, and it was obvious that his purpose here was similar to Vegapunk. As for his identity, captain of the self-guardian army, and also the leader of the future revolutionary army, Monkey D. Dragon. Ronnie took a quick look at the two men, and then said calmly, I am one of the thirteen thrones of the Golden Kingdom, the Apostle of the Stars, Ronnie. Please follow me, two special guests. Golden Kingdom. Thirteen Thrones. Star Apostles. As they followed Lonnie into the Golden City, Long and Vegapunk were thinking about what these names meant. 
They knew very well that the celestial dragons who called themselves gods in this world were the celestial dragons who lived in Mariajoy. But those guys would not come to Ohara, which was destroyed by Buster Call, to build a kingdom, and would not treat them in this way. However, compared to Vegapunk's thinking about these terms, Long was more concerned about Lani. This woman gave him a feeling of extreme danger. There was no doubt that the other party was extremely powerful. It was initially estimated that she was not weaker than Marine Admiral. And the 13 thrones. Does it mean that in this so-called Golden Kingdom, there are 12 people with the same strength as Lani? No, this is impossible. Shaking his head, Long quickly denied this guess in his heart. After all, it was a bit outrageous. Twelve strong men of at least admiral level. Not to mention that it is unlikely to exist under the rule of the world government, even if they really exist, how could they be unknown in the sea? Maybe this woman named Lani is the strongest among the thirteen thrones. If the others have the strength of naval headquarters vice admiral, it would be scary enough. Hey, Vegapunk, that person is. Huo Shaoshan. Long was really scared. The man who was holding a piglet and walking towards the outside of the city with a smile looked exactly like the dead naval headquarters vice admiral Huo Shaoshan. It's just that he didn't have much power, just an ordinary person. It should just look similar. There are people in the world who look similar or even the same. Vegapunk gave a rational analysis. He didn't think Marine would joke about Huo Shaoshan's death. I would never believe that Huo Shaoshan would come to the Golden King City, to raise pigs. Should be, right. Although he agreed with Vegapunk's judgment, Long had a very strange feeling. It was as if there was a voice in his heart telling him that no matter how unbelievable it was, that person was Huo Shaoshan. Don't say he couldn't believe this voice. Even if you find Conan and let him reason for three days and three nights, he wouldn't believe such an outrageous thing. Long, who felt that his CPU would burn out if he continued to think, immediately shook his head and threw away everything he had just seen, so as not to affect his judgment of other things. You too, the thirteen thrones are up there, and the kings who are still in the city are waiting on the thrones. In front of the long stairs leading to the throne, Lani stopped. I hope you two are ready to meet the king and the king of gods. After saying this, she did not continue to wait, and walked slowly up. Long and Vegapunk looked at each other and followed closely. When they finished walking down this staircase, they saw thirteen sacred and majestic thrones, but most of them were empty, and only two thrones were occupied. After making a gesture to signal Long and Vegapunk to stop, Lani continued to walk forward to the throne that belonged to her. As she walked forward, she introduced the guests, King of Blessing Manga, one of the ten kings of the thirteen thrones, and also the guardian of the royal city. The Valkyrie, or the goddess of corruption Marinia, is also one of the ten kings of the thirteen thrones and the supreme commander of the Zunfu Corps. The other throne owners have not returned yet, so I will not introduce them one by one. When the voice fell, Lani sat on the throne on the right of the three thrones in front of the golden tree entrance. Before my king arrives, both of you should first state your intentions, and remember not to hide anything. Long was stunned at this moment. He looked at Mongot and Marinia on the throne, and his heart was extremely horrified. Before, he thought that the so-called thirteen thrones, except for Lani, were at most at the level of naval headquarters vice admiral, but now. The aura of these two guys, the so-called king of blessing and Valkyrie, definitely reached the admiral level. In other words. In Ohara today, there are at least three admiral strongmen in the Golden Royal City. Is this a holy place for archaeology? Are you sure it's not naval headquarters that has changed its skin? However, three admirals are still within the acceptable range. The remaining thrones will definitely not be so powerful. Moreover, Long suspected that what Lani said about not returning was not worthy of belief. The other people of the thirteen thrones might not exist. I have some friendship with Dr. Kroba, and I came here to pay tribute to him. After taking a deep breath and calming down, Long stated his purpose. Vegapunk was the same, but he had another intention, which was to read and study the property left by Ohara, those historical documents. After a moment of silence, Manjit raised his head and locked his sharp eyes on the two people, except for those who are approved by my god, only the thirteen thrones can enter the royal city library. You are not qualified. Not to mention Vegapunk and Long, who he didn't know, even if it was his brother. No, 
even if his father came, as long as he didn't have the qualifications, Manjit would not talk about the human relationship at all. A complete chat terminator. As for what you said just now about knowing the adoptive father of your own god, what does that have to do with Manjit? Just when everyone fell silent and the air was extremely quiet. The brilliant golden light bloomed behind the three thrones belonging to the apostles. Raymond walked out from the golden tree and sat on the throne in the middle. Vegapunk and Monkey D. Dragon, right. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kroba Raymond, the master of gold. Kroba, is it that Kroba? Vegapunk was a little uncertain, but in Ohara, it was Kroba again, so it should be correct. You are drive. Krobas. He is my father. Raymond did not need to hide this. If it were not for Dr. Kroba, he would have starved to death in some corner, so for your friendship with him, I can agree to the request just now. Really? That's great, I. Don't worry. Raymond interrupted Vegapunk's words of thanks, I also need to get something from you. Ah. Uh, I don't know what you want. Food, weapons and some devil fruit, I believe drive. Vegapunk can satisfy me. I will do my best, but I dare not make any promises. Slightly nodded, solved Vegapunk's question, Raymond then turned his attention to Long, so, Mr. Long, your purpose of coming here should not just be to pay tribute, right? It was just for the memorial service. After all, Dr. Kroba and I are a little hypocritical, but if I have to say something else. Long raised his head and looked directly at the young man on the throne, maybe it's to strengthen some ideas. Ohara, just made an opinion about the, unreasonable, name of the law, and those guys violently slaughtered these scholars who had no fighting power. It's simply unbearable. Hearing these angry words, Vegapunk couldn't help but look at the dragon beside him. Long, do you want to? Well, I want to build an army that can fight against them. Don't you hate war? There is no other way. Wait and see, Vegapunk. I will change the world. I won't let Kroba's sacrifice go to waste. After a slight pause, Long said to the boy who can now represent Ohara, I won't let Ohara's will be cut off. So what do you think? Ohar's children. Papapa. Raymond slowly got up, applauding the declaration of Long, and walking towards these two special guests. With his footsteps, the evil stem King Menget and the gods of the gods Maliani also stood up. This is their respect for the god of servant. On the broken Ohara, the establishment of this golden country will naturally make the glory of the gold all over the world. Raymond looked at the resolute man in front of him. We are not the same as passers-by, but if we want to deal with the world, we can reach some cooperation. Want to, replace the celestial dragons. I heard that it was not the same as the passers-by, and then contacted Genie and others to call it God. The dragon quickly gave birth to a guess. Ha ha. It is difficult to imagine that Kloba's guy will teach you this existence, but. Quote. People. Just as the other party said. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. He wanted to form an army that could fight against the world government and resist its injustice and atrocities. But he also knew how terrifying the world government was. In the process of fighting against it, it would be best to have the help of gold. Okay, let's stop this conversation. Raymond stretched and turned around and sat on the throne again. Lonnie, you are responsible for taking them to the library. All the benefits that can be obtained from this conversation have been obtained. Get supplies from Vegapunk and establish contact with the future revolutionary army. Even if Raymond does not think that the revolutionary army can provide much help on the road to gold, it can at least cause some trouble for the world government. Please follow me, both of you. A cold voice sounded, and Lonnie took Vegapunk and Long away. Then, after bowing to Raymond, Mungert and Marinia also left to do their own things. Now there are only two of them in the top management of Golden King City, and many things need to be handled by them. Golden King City, Library. Thanks to you for defending it, this is yours, it's Ohara's victory. As soon as he entered this place, Vegapunk couldn't stop his tears and excitement. Those books and documents that were carefully sorted and summarized on the bookshelf were the property left by Ohara at the cost of his life, and also the will passed down by those scholars. Robin, who had just put down a book, also found the two strange people brought by Lonnie. But she didn't care about it, because Raymond would protect her here, so she naturally picked up another book and continued to explore the ocean of knowledge. 
A moment later, when Vegapunk was also immersed in historical documents, Lani took a book with a red cover and handed it to Long. This is the book that the God King ordered to give you. Huh. Long was stunned for a moment. He didn't have much interest in these books, but since the boy prepared them for him, he might as well take a look. As soon as he opened the book and read the first page, he was filled with shock, and then ignored everything outside, completely immersed in the world of the book. I don't know how long it took. When he closed the book, he exhaled a breath of turbid air, as if he had exhaled all the depression in his chest. The whole person's spirit has undergone a qualitative change. If he had just decided to raise an army that could fight and resist before, then now, he seems to have an extremely lofty ideal that he is willing to fight for all his life. Although I don't know who Lao Ma, Lao En and Lao Lai are, their thoughts have pulled themselves to a whole new height. It's like standing on the shoulders of giants and overlooking this world that has been made minor by the world government. Huh. Exhaling again, Long hid this nameless book in his arms, and then turned and left. He didn't say a word along the way, and didn't even notice the changes in the surrounding scene, just moving forward. Until he walked out of the Golden King City, stood on the coast, looked back at the golden tree emitting brilliant light, and whispered to himself, we will definitely be fellow travelers. In his opinion, this book should be written by Raymond. After all, he had never heard of the things in it. Other scholars in O'Hara should not have written such thoughts, except Raymond. This outlier among O'Hara scholars who built the Golden King City. West Blue, the Kingdom of Flowers. Your Majesty, recently many mafia have entered the border of our Kingdom of Flowers. Although no incidents have occurred, the number is a bit too much. And some of these mafia have good strength, they should be from the five major families. A strong man with two beards, several meters tall, is standing in the palace of the Kingdom of Flowers at this moment, telling the King of the Kingdom of Flowers all the recent domestic intelligence. And this strong man is a strong man in the Kingdom of Flowers who is as famous as Cone Green Pepper, and the Pillar of Urbao Navy. Well, this number is indeed a bit strange, but the five major families of West Blue, do they really have the guts to provoke the Kingdom of Flowers? Raman King kept a hypocritical smile on his face, and there was some contempt in his words. The five major families of West Blue are indeed very famous, but for the Kingdom of Flowers, they are just that. Unless the five major families unite, there is still something to watch, but the problem is that they have many conflicts with each other. Can they unite? Ohara, the Golden Kingdom. The Thirteen Thrones are where all the high-level officials of the Golden Kingdom gather. When I say all, it actually means Raymond, Rani, Mungat and Marinia. There is no way, this is just a new business, and the family is not rich. I think you all know the content of today's meeting. Raymond's eyes condensed. It's time to bring the Flower Kingdom under the Golden Kingdom. Just three days after Vegapunk left, Bej sent a message that the mafia that infiltrated the Flower Kingdom had collected enough intelligence. This included the locations of the Flower Kingdom army, the Urbao Navy and the Babao Navy, and even drew a part of the opponent's defense deployment. It can only be said that Bej is worthy of being one of the supernovas of the future evil generation. After ruling the five major families of West Blue, his ability was truly demonstrated. No wonder this guy always talks about, troops. It turns out he is a commander. I am willing to go out to conquer the Kingdom of Flowers for my god. Menjit was the first to stand up and kneel on one knee facing Raymond. It was Marinia who was responsible for solving the five major families of West Blue last time. This time it is his turn. Although guarding the Golden King City is also a supreme honor for him as the Blessed King, don't forget that he is also the King of Evil Omens. As the King of Evil Omens, how can he not lead the army to go out and make achievements? It was also because she knew his thoughts that Marinia did not ask for orders, but Raymond had to decide on this matter in the end. He waved his hand, signaling Munger to return to his seat first, and then Raymond looked up at the dazzling golden tree, thinking to himself, consume 70,000 law points for reincarnation. These 70,000 law points were provided by people who believed in the golden law and some blind pirates and mafia in recent days. It was also his entire savings at the moment, and he used it now just to make it easier to deal with the kingdom of flowers. Consume 70,000 law points for reincarnation. When the system prompt sounded, the golden light appeared in front of several people, and a figure also appeared vaguely in the light. 
and before this figure appeared completely, one of the thrones belonging to the ten kings among the thirteen thrones emitted light in response to it. Although Raymond did not change his face, he was still very excited, but soon this excitement disappeared. Ding! This reincarnation has been successful. Limb Reattachment King, Greg. Greg Knight 10. Greg Soldier 90. Ability Obtained. Limb Reattachment. Golden Law Mastery Improved. Side Quest Progress. 13 Thrones, 4 thirteenths. Reward. Golden Red Wolf. Looking at the guy who appeared in front of him, with many limbs and a golden crown on his head. Raymond felt like he fell from the clouds into the abyss. Limb Reattachment King, Greg. A descendant of the Golden Royal Family who is immersed in the golden glory of the past and is determined to prove himself. Although he calls himself the Golden King, he does not have the strength to match it, and even. He does not have the dignity and persistence of a king. Not to mention that he kissed the instep of Marlenia after being beaten, just running away when the royal city was in danger is enough to make people despise him. Even Greg, whose strength has increased after the limb graft, is far inferior to Mongod and others. Thor even doubts that this guy is at best an intermediate level, and it is hard to say whether he can beat the vice admiral of the headquarters. Can this guy also be ranked among the thirteen thrones? If his father, the Golden Prince Godwin, is okay, what kind of hook is this Greg? But then again, this guy is indeed qualified. After all, he is the son of Godwin and the most orthodox heir of the Golden Royal Family. In terms of identity and bloodline, this guy is quite noble, but. When Raymond saw the Thirteen Thrones radiating glory, he thought he would come with a big wave, but who would have thought that he would actually poop a big one? Moreover, the system seemed to be embarrassed to let Greg sit on the throne this time, so it created a group of knights and soldiers to support him. But the problem is that even if the soldiers of Stonewell City are added, they may not be enough for the Valkyrie to fight alone. Not to mention Raymond himself, even Mungert and Marinia, when they saw Greg sitting on the 13th throne with them, their faces were extremely ugly. Gold. Greg, who was originally planning to call himself the Golden King, felt several life-threatening eyes as soon as he said it. Then, according to his previous practice, he chose to follow his heart. Greg, the limb removal king, pay homage to my god. At this moment, those eyes were retracted. If he dared to call himself the golden king just now, even if he couldn't kill him, Mungert or Marinia would beat him unconscious. That, my god. Seeing that Raymond didn't respond for a long time, Greg felt uneasy. Although I know I'm weak, at least I look intimidating, right? Besides, I have more hands than Lonnie, so I can't despise you, can I? Oh, forget it. Raymond sighed helplessly, and at most he would just treat it as a small guarantee. It just so happens that you lead the Stonewell City Legion, so the task of attacking the Flower Kingdom head-on will be handed over to you. The Eight Treasures Navy and its pillars are in charge of Marenia, and the Second Treasures Navy and its pillars are in charge of Manjit. Lani will go to the Flower Kingdom first to persuade its king to surrender. If it can be included in the golden cover without using swords, it will be the best. The rest is up to you to arrange, and we will go out in three days. That's it, I want to be quiet. After leaving the last sentence, Raymond went directly back to the inside of the golden tree. After he left, Manjit and others had no meaning to stay here. Although taking over the Flower Kingdom was just a small matter for them, it took all their strength to fight the rabbit, so they still had to prepare. Don't hold us back, Greg. Standing up, Mungert stared at the limb-removing king with cold eyes, not giving him any face. But facing this blessed king, Greg didn't even dare to breathe, and could only nod and say yes. He had no choice. The people present were not only strong enough to crush him, but also older than him. Forget it, let's grow up in a wretched way. Thirty years in the east, thirty years in the west, don't bully the young, the middle-aged poor. When I receive a powerful limb, I will settle accounts with you guys. Ha 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 ha. Of course, this can only be Greg's good wish. Even if another thirty years pass, he can only sigh don't bully the old poor. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.